Welcome to oh, Review It Yourself, the film podcast. I am so bad at this stuff. I hate, you know, this selling yourself. And I know that's kind of the point because you need people to listen to you. But, like, I'm not naturally enthusiastic. Like, if I love a film like The Mummy or something like that, I'm, I'm, I'm the 1999 one. Not that filth. Not that 2017 filth. Right. See? Passionate. But I don't have that natural enthusiasm. So, you know, I, 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 I struggle to sell myself, you know, sell my podcast. Look, it's me, Sean, just talking to other people who like talking about films. Might be my family, my mum, my sister, other people in my family. Might be my mates in real life. It might be other podcasters who come on, we waffle, we have a chat. No real structure to it. Through se- a few, a, a few, what, what, what? A few segments thrown in every, every now and again. Uh, but, you know, just a chat, really. Like you'd have with your mates. If you were sat in the pub or whatever. But, yeah. Come and give it a go. Hello and welcome to Pods Like Us. I'm Martin Quibell, known to my friends as Marv, and this time I am speaking with Darren from my guest list pod. Hey, Darren, thanks for speaking with me. Hope you're okay. Yeah, I'm good, Marv. Uh, It's a pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me on the show. Yeah, it's always great to get a chance to talk to you. My uh, my in joke here is I might as well get somebody who does a show that's similar to mine that is better that gets better numbers and see if I can <laughs> see if I can get a bit of interest off the back of I, that. I think you're being very modest there, uh, Marv. You're uh, way more prolific than I am, and uh, I think you get pretty good numbers and pro- definitely better than mine. But thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> At least you weren't as naive as me, thinking that when I started the show, I was doing something original. <laughs> no, uh, it's it's funny when I I decided to come up with the idea for the show, uh, I looked at all the things that I was interested in, and I was already listening to fantastic podcasts that actually covered those areas, and I thought, well, if I do want to do this, what am I going to do? And I thought, well, I, I appreciate everybody else's work. I love so many fantastic podcasts. I'd love to share those podcasts with other people and just promote podcasts in general because I think it's a great platform and a great format. But it, it, my probably main motivation was just to let other people know about everyone else's great work. And like I, I say sometimes on my show, it's a bit of a, a selfish endeavor because I get to talk to some really interesting people like yourself. Yeah, because I've been on your show before, which is um, which was a fun experience. You did. You were you were fantastic, and uh, I learnt a lot about the Beatles uh, talking to you that I didn't know before. That's for sure. I, I still haven't had anybody from my favourite band, you know, Queen related podcast. I still not had anyone from a Queen podcast on yet. Well, that's just a shame, and uh, we're going to have to look at trying to fix that. We might have to uh, nudge some people on uh, social media somewhere just to, I'll nudge them your way. <laughs> I'm just worried that I've been waiting that long that I might get them on my show and then talk for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I, I think yeah, you and I, we have that uh, that potential to uh, go on. Uh, our, our, our episodes are not usually short. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, but that's good. Look, and I think when you're having a genuine conversation and you do get carried away like that, I, I, I see nothing wrong with that. Not everyone's going to listen to that podcast, you know, when neither of us are Joe Rogan. So, but no. uh, while we're having fun and we're not boring the guest, I think that's fine. Well, we both approach it similarly in that way where we're both, I, th- I think both of us think of it in a way that, we're introducing listeners to who they are as podcasters and yes. what they are about. Whereas a lot of podcasts that were before we started, a lot of podcasts that that looked at this, it was relatively re- relatively short, about twenty minutes to thirty minutes, and it was just basically getting the gist of how do they record the show, blah blah blah. It's quick in and out, and there was very little discussion in those shows. Whereas our shows 
we're about having a long discussion with these people so it introduces the listener to what their show is essentially it's like a micro version of of their show yeah definitely yeah definitely and and i think also what i like to try and bring out if i can is who the the host is other than just a podcast host who the person is what's led them to the point that they decided to start podcasting you know that 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 I always call it the uh, Norwegian band moment, that aha moment where they go, "I'm going to do a podcast," and I, I I'd like to know what the impetus for that is in individuals, and because uh, you know obviously know my story, but I, I'm interested why other people uh, decided to do it, and that's one of the, the questions I pretty much ask everyone that comes on the show. Yeah. So, do you remember what the first podcast was that you listened to? Ah, oh, first podcast. That's a long time ago. Um, so I'm a, I'm a bit of an old techie. So uh, I think one of the first podcasts I ever listened to was a, a podcast called Sovereign Tech. Yep. Uh, it's hosted by Brian Sovereign. And it it's he's amazing because apart from his knowledge, he's a one-man show and he talks constantly for hours. And uh, he's larger than life, and uh, he has a lot of interests, including he, one of his uh, main interests is his love for Babylon 5, which I share. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and uh, he, he was a, a tech podcast that uh, delved into a lot of the open source stuff and into security and into Kali Linux and all that sort of, uh, sort of stuff that I was into at the time. Um, but he was also into a lot of sci-fi stuff, and he he did a sci-fi um, sort of audio drama as well later on in in his podcast uh, career. Um, and he's I think he's written a book, and he's yeah he's, he does a lot of work, and he's very involved in back then in the podcast, and also in the tech, probably even more involved in the tech community. But he was probably one of the first ones. Um, the other one was probably an Australian podcast called Mysterious Universe. Mm-hmm. There are yep. I, I'm, I love the paranormal, and these guys do it in a, a fun way, and they're they're both very well researched. Uh, one of the guys is a doctor, and I can't remember what uh, I can't remember what the other guy is, but uh, they they present a very polished show and have done from the start, and they're very organised. They've you know got a fantastic website, uh, you know great web um, merch store. And uh, did they do a really, really good show? And uh, that was one of the the first ones as well. Um, uh, try that. They're probably two of the first ones that I can remember. There's been so many. So that you're talking about 2009, probably onwards. Yeah, that's where I was. And then you know, I I started to listen to the first um, podcast. I started to listen to religiously was an ice hockey podcast because I'm a big ice hockey fan, and it was uh, called Pucks on Net. Uh, but that wasn't till I think about tw- twenty twelve. Um, but and and before then, I was just hopping from podcast to podcast. Uh, really like uh, NPR's Radio Lab. That was one that uh, I actually bought the app at one stage to to listen to the shows. Uh, yeah, that's about it. That, that's all I can probably remember from that long ago. My my memory is not what it used to be. So. <laughs> NPR makes some incredible music related shows. I haven't actually explored any of those, unfortunately. Um, mainly it's been Radiolab and uh, a similar sorts of shows to that. Uh, what's There's a couple others that I, I listen to as well. I, I uh, can't bring them to memory right now. But but stuff like that, like 99% Invisible, um, you know, 30 for 30, uh, TED Talks, all those sorts of shows, yep. um, they're really interesting. I, I really find them uh, interesting, so... Yeah, from from Ted. I mean, you 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 know, I listen to TEDx shorts, uh, which are like mm. little short but short talks, and they're from the same people who do TED. So, yes. so there's the same company. And yeah, then, I do uh, listen to the. Sorry. Yeah. And then you've got others as well, like American Public Media. They do a lot of lot of shows as well. Yes. You know, yes there's there's all these different companies that do like these shows, and the American Public Media ones. If I'm, I, I, I feel like I'm interrupting here, but no. 
they they're interesting where if somebody's after just something that's sort of like short or bite size their shows for the most part are like two minutes three minutes so you'll get mm. like uh com- composer's date book where each day they talk about something in the history of like classical music for the most part and okay. it's a story from that day sometime in history for two minutes and then uh, you get the word of the day from merriam webster who's you know the big dictionary people in America and that's yes. that's two minutes and it teaches you a new word every day so that, that it's it's all interesting oh definitely and uh Guy Raz you know and people like that that I've listened to for a long time now they're you know um they're they're very well known and they produce a quality product and I don't think I've ever listened to an NPR or American Public Radio uh podcast that I haven't enjoyed um, no. And NPR actually used to have a um, a radio a slot on a, a radio station out here in Australia that I used to uh, wait for at lunchtime to listen to um, before podcasts were a big thing. So they've been around for a while, so it's pretty good. They really have. So, but both of us uh, of we we both got into listening to podcasts really early on, essentially in the you know mid to late. 2000s mm. you know, so I, I keep yeah, thinking occasionally why on earth did we leave it so long to actually do it ourselves <laughs> um yeah look I, I can answer that question for sure i i was enjoying <laughs> listening of um i think i've broached this subject as well on my podcast i i never envisaged myself as being creative not in this no. way uh i do uh, actually talk to groups of people as part of my my job but uh when i first time i ever got in front of a microphone it was very daunting and then what made it worse is i listened to my voice back and that was even i i was pretty much you know said yep that, that's it i'm not gonna ever do that again i'm never gonna record my voice again and listen back to it so uh there was a lot of imposter syndrome uh, i guess they call it uh there and, and also the fact that I, I really did think that I enjoyed, you know, consuming all the, the, the entertainment that I was getting from the podcasts I listened to. And, but it, it always seemed that when I was talking to people, my conversations had come back to the podcast that I was listening to at the time. And uh, Dan Carlin, for one uh, of recent time, you know, I, I love to talk about his podcast and, you know, they, they're anywhere from four to six hours long, but, they are fantastic, and I I love talking uh, to people about uh, what he does, and and when they hear how long they are, they they pretty much say, well, you know, <laughs> it's a little bit too much of an investment for me, but I I really do enjoy his podcasts, and and that and that's the thing, I was enjoying everybody else's podcast. I thought, well, I'm not going to bring anything new to to what you know to the landscape of uh, uh, of podcasting. Um, uh, but I, I thought wanted to get in on the act as well. I just I thought, well, I'd like to do something and add something to what everyone else is doing. And I didn't think I could do that uh, by myself. I wanted to do a show originally with my sons, and I thought that yeah. might be. And we'd discuss discuss certain topics and uh, explore the generation gap, and uh, maybe have uh, you know cr- contrary. Uh, opinions on certain things but you know my eldest boy and i we think very much the same so there wouldn't be a lot of stuff that we probably disagreed on when it came to movies tv film or music so uh and the little ones weren't uh interested but i still wanted to do something so i thought i'd still like to steer people towards great content and and try to reward the people that are putting themselves out there and if I could do that and not make a fool of myself, that'd be even better. So, so that's that's pretty much how it came about. Yeah. I'm now going to jump ahead on the bullet list, and I'm going to come to. Um, that makes me think of it is is the dre- a dreadful question. So, what's your listening uh, resume like? What's what's it like? Okay, so it's very different to the old days. The old days, I, I would have a um, uh, a group of podcasts that I would listen to religiously, obviously, and as they come out, yeah. I'd just listen to new episodes. And I'd every now and then explore 
a different show in a, a certain genre if I was getting bored or I wanted to get a, a, a different perspective on on something, especially in the paranormal um, uh, area because there's a lot of podcasts devoted to paranormal activity and and UFOs and 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 ghosts and everything else that goes with uh, with that area. And um, so that's what it was before I started podcasting. Now that I'm podcasting, I don't have too many shows that I get to regularly listen to the way I used to. So I'm always looking for new shows. And because I don't just like to listen to one episode of a show and make a judgment on whether that show is any good or not, I end up listening to you know at least half a dozen episodes of a show. Now, that takes up a lot of time if the shows are an hour or an hour and a half. Um, or, or more. So, yep. and I usually listen to the first episode, then I'll jump to somewhere in their teens, and then I'll jump to somewhere in their forties, and then in their, a little, you know, uh, a little bit more recent after that, just to get an idea of how the shows progressed, uh, how their audio's gotten better, what they've done with music and intro and formatting, what they've done with the whole idea of how they've the concept of the show, whether they've changed it. Um, whether they've had a co-host that's no longer there uh, or a co-host that's gone missing for a while, what, you know, and I, uh, so it's all research. So when I talk to them, uh, if I do choose them uh, to be on, um, I have a bit more of a, an educated idea of, you know, where the show's been. I can ask some relevant and poignant questions. So, so now, (laughs) sorry, it's a long, it's a very long answer, but so what I I listen to now regularly is, uh, I've been following one podcast in particular of late because there's been a big podcast or radio battle being going on between um, a podcast called Who Are These Podcasts and Stuttering John Melendez. So that's that's been something I've been been sort of uh, following. So I've, I've tried to listen to them when I can. Uh, I listen to the Tennis podcast a lot because I, I love Nick's show. Um, he does blind lists for people that come on and then they have to try and choose what's in a top 10. Uh, I listen to Pod News. That's a fairly recent ad- addition um, because yeah. uh, James Credlin does a fantastic job uh, with Pod News. Uh, I obviously listen to your show when I can, which is which is fantastic. Um, I listen to Super Fun Time Trivia. Uh, religiously with my son on the way home from pick him up from work. Those guys are, are great. They're funny. The trivia is good. And Cole and Kevin are lovely people. Uh, don't uh, don't let the big beard on Kevin fool you. He, uh, I think he's a big teddy bear. He's probably going to hate me if, ever, <laughs> if he ever hears this, but, uh, but they're great. I love those guys. Um, Brian Rollins from uh, – there's another trivia podcast that I actually listen to uh, I do want to – I actually have uh, organized for him to be a guest on the show, Dorky, Geeky, Nerdy Trivia Podcast. Uh, yeah. That's another pro- trivia podcast that I like listening to. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, as of late, just recently, I found an amazing audio drama called Nevermore Hollows, and I binged yeah. that, as you probably saw from my Instagram post. Uh, I love my audio dramas, and uh, it's a it's a, a fantastic. If you're into Lovecraftian horror, and uh, if you like Night Vale or Archive eighty one, Alice isn't dead. What else? You know, any of those sorts of uh, offbeat, slightly weird horror podcasts. Then Nevermore Hollows is a, is a great one. So, yeah, and I, and I just found a new one called Desert Skies that I'm actually now listening to. So. Yeah, and that's 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 an interesting one. I've only I'm only three episodes into that yet, so so I've very long winded any... answer as to what I'm listening to. Sorry, don't give me any spoilers about Desert Skies because that's in my list already. Oh, fantastic! To start I, on that is oh great. Yeah, look, um, novel concept. I think you'll and the way they they do it is is really good. I, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, like I said, I'm only three episodes in, but I'm I'm looking forward to listening to it uh, some more. But uh, but there's a heap. Like I listened to you put me on to. I think it was the um, the scientists podcast. So you know um, the yeah. naked scientists, uh, anatomy, astrology, astronomy, um, genetics. I listen to those guys too because a lot of times they'll have shorter episodes that I can fit into uh, my work day. 
Um, so they're great. I, lo- I love listening to educational stuff like that. And Radio Lab when I can, uh, 99% Invisible, uh, This American Life every now and then, Hidden Brain every now and then. Uh, just trying to look to see what else I've been listening to lately. Uh, what else is on there? Um, the Audacity to Podcast, Indie Podcaster, you know, Jeff Townsend. Uh, he hasn't put one out for a while, but, uh, yeah, I, I do actually catch up with his uh, spaces, Twitter spaces. He has he hosts a Twitter space event on Twitter. I think it's twice a week, and I usually catch one of those. <laughs> I'm just taking note of where we've been talking here because I'm going to I'm going to grab all of these different titles and do <laughs> and do do just just a uh, in the lead up to bringing this episode out. I might do a trailer and it will just be titles of pods that we're going to discuss. <laughs> okay, no worries. <laughs> I, I won't go any further because there's a <laughs> there's a few more, but uh, but uh, I'll leave it at that. There's, uh, I have actually, in, I use Stitcher. I've gone back to Stitcher. I have different um, groups. I have a group of my regulars. Then I have a group of shows yeah. to listen to for research. And um, I have them all in different groups just so I can I keep a, a note of where I am. <laughs> so we're both the same. That's the thing about doing a show like ours. You have to listen to a lot of shows and make time yes. for them. Yeah. yeah. What do you use? What do you? What podcatcher do you use? Um, I very often use Apple Podcast because I'm in the van. So yeah, I'm in a van listening to it with CarPlay. So you know, you'll you'll shout. I'll shout. You know, the the Siri and get her just, or him. He's got a male voice on mine to um to just you know play podcasts. But I've already got them lined up. It's okay. strange. I I have them. I get them set up before I even start leave for work. Perfect. I'll actually have them all lined up in the play already so that yeah. it just goes in that sequence and hopefully I get as many as I can in that night while I'm at work driving yep. around. Yep. Ah, oh, fantastic. But I also use good pods as well. Um, yep. um, occasionally I use Spotify because there's some sh- – the- a difficult one is, you know, some shows are only available on certain players. Yes, so I, th- I think Spotify is where I listen to Batman Unburied. I think it's called. Yeah, and there are a couple of other shows that are only on Spotify, and the shows that are only on Podbean as well. So yeah, I've got yeah. to have all of these different players if I want to listen to all of these shows. You must have a ton of apps yourself. I do. I well, I listen to Joe Rogan podcast every now and then when there's someone on there I want to listen to. And uh, last podcast on the left, which is a really funny horror pod. It's a podcast that they go over serial killers and and horror and stuff like that. But they do it in a very very funny way. Um, they, I think, this they are exclusive with Spotify as well. So there's two shows there that I listen to. But I, yeah, I use uh, Good Pods. I used to use. Um, uh, pocket casts but they yeah. they started to be a little bit buggy and when i first started listening to podcasts i used stitcher they changed the ui and i didn't like it so i was actually listening on a um a few different um players but recently i went back to stitcher and the ui is really good so i i do like listening now most of my listening's done on stitcher but i do have apple podcasts and i do have good pods obviously and Spotify, uh, what else? What's the other one I've got here? No, I've pretty much gotten rid of everything else because I, I used to listen to um, Procast, I think it was, that I used to get my clips from. But I've, um, I use my iPad and put it into my mixer now to get my clips for my shows. So I don't use Procast anymore. Right. I was going to say, of course, at least now it's easier in a way because when we first started listening to podcasts in the 2000s, you couldn't stream. You had to actually download them to your iPod and then listen yes. to them or, or whatever device it was. Yes. So you had to do that before you listened. Yeah. You had to download the entire episode and then listen in your own time, <laughs> then get rid of it to make room for another one. And yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and that was funny in the, the days, uh, uh, in those days when I was actually driving and I had to drive in the country and there was uh you know say two hours between my next where i am in the next destination i'd have to use the wi-fi to 
to download uh, uh, a show. Uh, and then halfway through, if I decided I didn't want to listen to it anymore, it was bad luck because I had nothing else to listen to except for the radio or CDs. So uh, CDs, now there's something that we haven't had in a car for a while. So... What was it? I was listening to uh, Daily Shower Thoughts the other day, and one of the shower thoughts there was, uh, what is it, in the last 40 years, we've gone to having just a radio in the cars to having cassette player in the car, to having a CD player in the car, to now just having a radio in the car again and, and you know, yes, a, a thing to <laughs> plug in your phone. So the world's changed. Yes, yeah, in Orcs Court or something like that, or straight into Apple CarPlay. Yeah, it's crazy, but yep. and that's the way the world is now with everything, and everything's on demand, whether it be movies or radio or food or uh, you know uh, Uber, <laughs> everything's on. That's uh, the on demand um, uh, society we live in now, I guess, and people are less patient and <laughs> not as happy as they used to be. I don't think. <laughs> No, no. I was saying to somebody the other day, actually, going on a tangent here, that that the, the interesting thing is because so at work I will listen and I'll have my my own phone, my i my iPhone plugged into the the work van, and then so that uses mm-hmm. Apple CarPlay, and I was saying to them that in a way it's interesting. I said because you've got your entire phone there to use and the apps that it will let you use while while you're driving, and I said so. Essentially, I said, you know, you've got your music there, so you can actually have radio stations, you can listen to podcasts, listen to your own music that you've got on your whatever player it is or streaming service. And I said, and um, even things like, you know, um, oh, SatNav, yeah, you know, you've got that on your phone as well. And I said, essentially, everything that you need is there. And I said, it's, it's I said, that's probably the good side to te- or a really good side to technology. Oh, for sure. The fact that we have uh, information at hand and all different types of information, you know, we grew up in an era where if you wanted to to know something, you went and got your Encyclopedia Britannica and, you know, got your, uh, got the right letter and pulled it out and had a read or you went to the library or you asked your dad or your grandfather or whatever sort of thing. So, but now there's, there's no excuse. And that's what I, there's no excuse for not knowing something, I guess, in terms or at least being able to, to, to get that knowledge very quickly. And I see that with my, my son who, my eldest boy who has a ridiculously retentive memory as well, which is great. But we, we talk about stuff that I wouldn't probably expect him to, to know or be interested in, but it's not because he reads a lot. But he watches a lot of YouTube and yeah. not just bad YouTube, but, you know, informative YouTube and uh, stuff that's interesting, you know, uh, astronomy, uh, stuff about, you know, uh, advances in uh, biotech and things like that. Um, you know, he's really into cars uh, of late. So he's, you know, he will talk about cars. He knows way more about things about cars than I do. So, um, but, you know, we'll we'll discuss movies a lot and music a lot. He's just got his uh, tickets to Slipknot, who are coming out to Australia, and uh, awesome. he's trying to, yeah, he's trying to get me to come, but uh, I didn't want to sort of uh, wreck the party. He's got a lot of mates that are all going together, and I didn't want uh, Dad spoiling the party just in case they wanted to get a little bit loose. Uh, but I do like Slipknot, so uh, oh well, maybe the next we're going to find something we can go to together. So, but yeah, uh, point point of the fact is though. There, we have everything at hand, and um, more than ever, you know, knowledge is this there for you to take. And I know, as a a youngster, I would have, I would have been, you know, uh, <laughs> well, I'll say it anyway, happy, happy as a pig in shit sort of thing that I could have yeah. just got all this <laughs> knowledge, you know, from instead of having to do all the research and the work that I did. You know, I, I you know, year, well, I was it uni you know I, I think about all the hours i did of reading and highlighting and you know transposing trans, you know just stuff so for for essays and things like that whereas nowadays um and, you know my first year of uni uh i was still doing handwritten um uh, assignments it wasn't until the second year that i i was able to use my mate's uh, computer with i think it was a 20 meg hard drive and a dot matrix printer to, to do some of my essays um so you know it's a 
it's a it's it's moved to a uh, exponential rate technology it's it's crazy and it's an exciting time to to live in however i think there are a lot of uh things that don't make it as much fun as it was when we grew up no no but at least they don't you know at least now we they don't have to go around with all these street street books for certain areas because i've still got them <laughs> you know no all ways, the books yeah. that you had with like little <laughs> yes so each town i'd go to i'd have a street map book because obviously you know no sat nav no nothing back then it'd be right yes. where am i going i'm going there yeah yeah yep. find where the street yep. is and then leave it open and now you've just got it on your phone. You just go, you know, whatever device it is, shout it out and tell it to take you such and such a place, and it's there. Oh, it's amazing. It's very efficient. And like I said, I'm not anti-technology or anything like that, but no. uh, I think when it comes to the kids, sometimes there are some detrimental uh, effects of technology being so at hand. And um, over COVID, that was, that was um, multiplied by the fact that, you know, kids couldn't go out and so they got used to sitting in front of a screen all day. And I know it didn't do anything for my two uh, younger ones who, uh, and Nick was doing, my eldest boy was doing uni. He, he, I think, got six months where he got to have physical contact with or physical contact, you know, he was at the, the campus. And then for the rest of his course, uh, he didn't go to the campus at all. It was all online. So, you know, we were fortunate that we came out of COVID just as he was graduating. So we got to, to have a graduation ceremony. But the two little ones, um, it affected one more than the other, but he sort of became very introverted and uh, pulled back from a lot of his friendship groups, whereas my middle boy is very gregarious and uh, he, he worked to make sure that, you know, the friendship groups stayed uh, together and we helped by you know making sure that if they wanted to get together and they weren't supposed to we we let them get together because we have our own opinions on what they should have done and what they shouldn't have done with the lockdowns here but uh, I won't get political <laughs> yeah. um but uh yeah so uh yeah so it, long story short i guess tech is fantastic it is uh made podcasting a lot easier but um it does have its downside I think I think the the um, the problem is that you can get too reliant on it. You know, there there are good points to it, but sometimes you've got to take yourself away from it and just be, you know, let your own personal self actually live a life rather than these devices and this tech telling you how yeah. to live life in a way. Yeah. It, it's hard. I think it's harder for the kids now to distinguish between you know virtual life and actual yeah. real life, and and that's the problem. Uh, they've got so hung up in a virtual life that it's uh, they're missing out. They're missing out on a lot. But you know now that COVID's over, uh, you know my boys are all back to you know my youngest one does Muay Thai and basketball. My middle boy does basketball and has a part time job. You know my eldest boys. Uh, mad at the gym and uh he's gone back to he plays basketball but also has gone back to jiu-jitsu um yeah so they're back into being active again and we've just unfortunately wasted or lost two years so um yeah this is b nicole from buried on the tundra and you're listening to pods like us so I don't know why. I don't know why I put this one. Actually, it's an interesting one. Have you had any? What's the biggest hurdle that you've had, if you've had any, in getting the show out there? Oh, I think it's probably the biggest hurdle I had was what I probably touched on before in terms of imposter syndrome. I just didn't think that I could actually bring anything uh, novel to the space. And yeah. when I decided to do a different sort of format, I, I wasn't even sure if I, I wanted to do that because the first time I actually listened to myself uh, on a recording, I thought, no, I'm going to annoy so many people with my voice. And, uh, you know, it's all about, you know, mic technique and not saying um as many times as I do. It was, I just, I, I started once and then I just stopped. I thought, no, I can't do this. 
And then I, I listened to, I hate to say this, but I listened to some other podcasts and I thought, I can't be any worse. <laughs> it's probably a horrible thing to say. Uh, I may not be any better, but I don't think I could be any worse. But um, I, I think I have something to say. And like I, I mentioned, it wasn't really about what I had to say. It was about getting other people out there and getting them in front of other listeners and sharing some things I really enjoyed. Uh, you know, they're creative and I want to let everybody else know uh, that they're out there and they should listen to them. Uh, outside of that, I guess probably audio quality too. I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I, I wasn't getting the audio to where I was happy and yep. I upgraded my microphone and I bought a, a mixer to try and help with that. And then I realized also that sometimes it comes down to, you know, me and mic technique uh it's also uh, i guess uh processing a lot of you know editing and how you, learning how to use the equalizer and noise reduction and things like that that was all a big learning curve lots of youtube videos <laughs> so um i'm just trying to think that they're, they're probably the main things or probably the main thing now in terms of a uh, an impediment in getting stuff out there is time i just now that yeah. we're fully back into you know i've got three boys as i said and they they're i'm a big they're a big part of my life every day i'm very hands-on dad and i I coach basketball and i'm involved with some of their other sports as well plus i have a full-time job (laughs) and uh uh my wife's been pretty she she went to hospital twice over covid with when we had covid we had it pretty bad and she's had some ongoing uh, issues with that as well which you know, it hasn't been great. So um, time's a, a big one for me. And that's why when I launched season three, I've I've tried to get a lot of the interviews done now so that if I do have a, a period or where I have to have a hiatus from recording, I'll at least have a few interviews in the bank so I can still put something out consistently. Because my, my goal is to, once I launch season three, three of my show is to then not have breaks the way of being having them uh, my first two years i had a lot of problems with you know i was i got electrocuted twice which wasn't much fun yeah. <laughs> um, the second one was uh, a big one and that was that wasn't a lot of fun at all and yeah it's so i'm trying to i'm, I'm working towards season three being my best season yet and also in the future not having as as long a break in between seasons um, and I'm also looking to change a few things up for season three, make it better, maybe get some new music, uh, maybe transitions in a different way than I've done so far. And yeah, um, so far the guests I've interviewed have been fantastic. Um, yeah, I can't wait to put the, the episodes out and I've got a, a really interesting lineup. I think of review shows, which is the other thing that I do. I do every second week I do a review show. And the review shows that I've got coming out, I think, will be interesting for for a lot of people. Um, there's some audio dramas in there, and some educational stuff. So yeah, I'm 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 mildly, uh, you know, pos- I'm, well, I'm cautiously positive about what's coming out. So we'll see. I'm positive about what you what you're coming out with. You know, I, I'm <laughs> I'm not going to have any cautiousness at all about that. Oh, thank you very much. That's uh, very kind. So it's a similar thing then where you'll um, – well, actually, it's, it's slightly different. I mean, one of the things I like about yours is when I was on your show, it was like uh, you send – you send you ask them what they want to um, – you give them a list of topics, essentially, and then they have to pick their list of top, you know, their favourites and whatever. So, so that gets people to know who that person is as a person in themselves yes. and that's, so you'll have a show you'll yes. have one of those shows and then you have the review show is it always uh, a chat show then a review chat review chat review do you try to keep that sort of going yes definitely um so i try to have i at least try to keep that consistent so uh i'll do a review show and then the next show will be a guest and yep. then a review show and then a guest and and that's just something i came up with Honestly, it's something I came up with to give me a break in between interview shows so I could find guests. 
uh, I could do, I, I really, it, it was also another way of getting more podcasts out there instead of just doing review shows. Not everyone listens to my review shows and not everyone listens to my interview shows, but I get really good numbers on the uh, review shows, which surprised me to, to begin with. Uh, but I think it's because they're a shorter format. They're fairly succinct in, in terms of uh, the information I try to give. And uh, I've actually formatted that now coming into season three so that it was – Really, I'd, I'd write a script and then I'd read it and within that script would be what I like about that show. But now I'm breaking it down in terms of this is the show, this is the history of the show, this is what it's about, and then I'll go into what I like about that show and why I like the show. And then at the end it'll be, well, if you like this kind of show, this kind of show, and this kind of show, then you'll love this show. And, um, yeah, yeah, so it's a little bit more formatted. Um I'm also going to introduce what I call a nuts and bolts show. So it's going to be uh, interviews with industry professionals uh, or professionals in a, a certain area of podcasting. It's I've done one so far and I am looking to do a few more, but uh, it's a little bit hard because one of the guys I actually wanted to do a, a nuts and bolts show with, he's actually going to be a guest, which I'm more excited about. Which is which yep. is great, but you know he has a lot of knowledge, and they're they're going to be a very they're going to be a short show. They're only going to be about 20, 30 minutes, and uh, it's going to be pretty much about you know marketing, or it's going to be about you know recording, editing, just something to do with uh, podcasting, the nuts and bolts of pod- podcasting, thus the name, and that will just be a bonus show that I maybe put out midweek, in between um, the other two shows. And then there might be a bonus show with a creator that isn't a podcaster, like uh, I did in season two with Amari Reynolds, who is a, a yep. rapper and YouTuber and an actor. Uh, but I, I found his his story interesting, and he was an interesting person. And I'm open to to doing some more bonus shows like that, where you know we still have that format of picking a top ten, which, as you quite rightly pointed out, I, I use that as a vehicle to get to know the person a little bit more as well by the the topic they choose and the and the top ten that they choose, and we we talk about what you know choices in that top ten means to them, and I think we 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 flesh out a little bit of who they are in terms of their choices, which is which is great. I, I love doing that, and um, yeah, so we keep that format, and and so I'm. That's pretty much going to be season three. It'll be you know the normal format plus some nuts, nuts and bolts shows and maybe a couple of bonus shows. Right. So that's structure and version. So how do you decide which topic you're going to choose? I mean, what what makes you decide what shows you're going to listen to and feature? That's a really good question um, because there are so many shows out there and. Okay, so I'll give you an example of why I listen to Desert Skies, and it's really superficial and it's really, I guess, silly, but I love their artwork. Okay. Uh, the artwork was really good and it seemed interesting. So then I read the blurb about the show, The About, and that seemed interesting, and that's why I chose that show. Now, I don't choose every show on artwork, but no. artwork does stand out. And it's the first thing you see when it comes to a podcast, and in that particular instance that's what drew me to that show but what i'll do is i'll go into um a podcaster uh, sorry podcatcher um groups categories genres whatever you want to call it and i'll have a look at some of the shows that are trending and then i'll have a look at all and i'll have a look at you know what those shows are about and i don't necessarily pick the the shows that are at the top of the the trending charts or anything like that i i like to try and give a lot of the you know indie podcasters uh, a chance to to be highlighted um thus with nevermore hollows uh an indie horror drama that you know that's a one-man show and it's really really good he does everything and uh, I was really happy when I, I listened to the show and I actually got to talk um, to Alan. And, um, yeah, he's actually one of the guests in season three. Uh, so a bit of a spoiler there, but we had a fantastic uh, talk, uh, chat. And otherwise, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I had a lot of uh, recent success with 
I went into a couple of Facebook groups and just said, look, my name's Darren and this is my show. Uh, if you think you'd like to be a guest, um, let me know. And I had a lot of people respond to that. Not everyone was probably a, a good fit and I hate saying no to people, but uh, my I'm concentrated on promoting podcasters and their shows. So uh, there's yeah. a lot of interesting people out there, like Imari Reynolds from my, my second season, and uh, I will you know, circle back to some of those people and maybe do a bonus show, but at the moment my, my uh, priority is podcasters and especially indie podcasters. So from – the people that responded, I was, I've been able to, uh, I've actually lined up uh, a couple of shows with some some interesting uh, podcasters. One in particular is only four episodes into her podcast, uh, right. but it's a novel idea. I love the concept. She's a lovely person, and you know, uh, I th- yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting uh, show. Uh, that's uh, one for uh, December. So, um, yeah. I won't. I won't give too much away yet. <laughs> so I was just that, looking at the great artwork for Desert Skies, with the because uh, uh, yeah. it's like it look, looks like a, a service station at night or something. Yes. Is that, yes. Yeah. 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 And it, I can't remember if it came up in a recommended or I was looking through that genre uh, of audio dramas or uh, it came up on Instagram. I can't remember exactly where, but I went. Oh, I wonder what that is. I just had a look at it, and it's it's been funny. It's been very interesting. I've been very lucky that it's something for some reason has caught my eye. I've gone had a look at the show, and then look at the the blurb about the show, and then listen to the show. And I've been able to contact the the creator, and they've been great in terms of yeah, yeah, I'll love to come on. And there's not too many people that have. I don't think I've actually had anyone so far say no, which is great. Um, and yeah, there's some, some, some good shows, I think in season three, I'm, 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 like I said, I'm, I'm cautiously positive about, uh, the, the response I'll get from some of the shows there, the, 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 the guests are, are, are really, they're great people. So. Right. We're going to go into the minutia here. So, um, the, the logo, you've made changes to the logo over time. So, I mean, I, I did the same thing with myself. So, so what were your thoughts then when you were when you were looking at the change of the logo for the show for yours? Um, I actually haven't changed my logo. I did put out one logo with my head on one of the tiles, um, and I do put out a logo. So it's my logo, but. All I do is I transplant the shows that have been in the season onto the logo uh, for Instagram, just as a, a thank you to everybody that has been on in that season. And that's why I do the amount of episodes that I do, because that's the amount of uh, tiles that I can fit into my logo when I uh, when I finish a season. So uh, the logo itself, I got off of Fiverr. I I, I paid. I think it was $35, $50, I can't remember now. And I tried to do the logo myself and I came up with a few ideas and I showed a few people and they said, yeah, that's 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 okay, that, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> they were <laughs> too enamoured with what I'd done. <laughs> um, I don't pretend to be a graphic artist. I don't play one on TV or anything like that. It's, uh, <laughs> it is what it is. And I spoke to someone who uh, did have a career in Uh, being a graphic artist and he said well look this is what you've got to understand people look at color first then they look at shapes then they'll look at um text i said okay so i went to fiverr uh picked someone i had a look at their work their work was pretty good and i said this is what i want but i want it to be colorful i want it to be relevant to what i do so include all the different um aspects of you know like a gaming controller music uh tv film because uh, they're you know books, although that never got on there. But we made a couple of adjustments, changed the color scheme around a little bit, and uh, then that was it. And I've actually used that logo since I launched the podcast. I, I the only changes right. I make are at the end of a season, yeah, where, when I actually put the tiles in of the shows that I've had on in that season. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm, I got it. I got it. There you go. Marv gets something wrong. 
That's, that's all right. We, we, it's, it's, look, it's hard to keep up. But, <laughs> it is. But we, we – because uh, I, I remember us – I think we had a discussion or something and you were sending me, like, pictures at one point. You know, I could have this completely wrong. It could be somebody else who keeps sending me pictures and saying, do you like this picture, that picture, or that picture? And they were saying – Asking me about pictures, there was, and I don't know if that was yourself yeah, there, actually. I there think was it one was point you. where yeah. I, w- yeah, there was one point where I, I'd, I'd played. I had someone uh, tell me that uh, podcast artwork, so your thumbnail, uh, gets more attention if your your visage, your your heads on the on the actual um, uh, artwork. So you see things like, uh, you know. Um, Alex Friedman, um, you know, Joe Rogan, I guess, in sort of stylized. Uh, but all these people, um, uh, Mark, is it Mark Moran, um, all these mm. guys who have got their 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 face um, uh, on their podcast and they said that, you know, you're building a brand of yourself and things like that. And I, I played or I toyed with the idea of putting a picture of me in one part of my existing logo and I, I sent you a, a couple of – um, f- photos that I was considering to put onto the logo, but I never actually did it uh, because, right. again, I wasn't so worried about building my brand as I was of just getting the, the show's brand out there uh, cause, because my show is not so much about me as it is about everybody else. So I I, I guess it, it really didn't make sense for me to put my, my head on there and really push me as – as the, the vo- focal point. <laughs> hey, I want the this focal is Brian point to be with Concerts That Made Us podcast. So. And you're listening <laughs> to Pods Like Us, a great show about other great shows. So the music and the sound of the show then, you know, so where, where did the music come from and um, what do you use for sound? So the music came from uh, just, it's from YouTube's library, uh, the YouTube free uh, music library. I went through a lot of different, I actually made my own intro with some music from the the youtube music library and it was a it was a quote intro so it had a lot of yeah. quotes from movies and i liked it and i had con- considered using it for the upcoming season but uh, i don't think i will uh i've, I've i'm gonna try and I, i'd like something that's more my own for the show because yeah. that music is in youtube's library so anyone can actually use it I don't think I've heard it on any YouTube videos that I've watched or anything like that or any anybody else's podcast so far. So that's great. But I'd like something that's uniquely mine and I might have to again I'm <laughs> you know although I was a musician when I was younger I I'm, I'm not exactly uh, got the time or the inclination to 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 try and compose something now and it would probably be half-assed anyway so I'd, I'd like something like with the logo i'd like something that looks like it's been professionally done so music's part of i guess why also there's been a bit of, bit of a delay with uh, season three coming through because I, I i do want to get that just right for for launching the next season and there are a few other things that i want to do in terms of the countdown and in terms of little um bridges and and little sound effects uh yeah it's just trying to up the production level of the show where I can. Uh, so I, part of that is, you know, I bought I bought a subscription to Riverside for remote yep. interviews because I was relying on uh, Skype and and Zoom, and there were interviews where you know the the audio would go out because of the connection uh, on the internet, and uh, I'm on an extender up here, so it doesn't it's not always. Uh, consistently good uh, so Riverside's yeah. been good like that although the first three three interviews I did two of the interviews had sync problems so <laughs> that wasn't great uh, wow. yeah 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 so I'm, do- I'm redoing one of those interviews on Saturday Saturday so uh, yeah but uh, uh, but so yeah so I invested uh, I thought to myself I'm going to do something uh, I want to do it good for season three I invested in Riverside I also uh, paid for a, a pod page website 
Um, yep. They're a great service. And instead of trying to, you know, I could have, you know, coded one up from HTML if I wanted to really, because that's sort of my background as well. But uh, nowadays it's just so easy with, I think, you know, there's pod.io and PodPage are two really good services for um, getting a website up and running really quickly and really, um, well, they have a free option, uh, but I decided to bite the bullet and, and bought a subscription, which gives you a, you know, a chance to leave voicemails and to have guest profiles, um, you know, collated on the on the website. And that's one thing I'll I'll, I'll have to get you to do. I have to get you to register as a guest so I can link your your pro- profile to the the show we did. Right. So, yeah, it's great for SEO and things like that. So, yeah. So uh, I, I try to invest a little bit more this this season and uh halfway through last season i upgraded my microphone from the uh what was it the behringer 8500 that i was using to the samsung uh q2u yep and that's been a, a good little microphone so far and uh, i'm looking to upgrade but i can't really see anything that's you know worth the extra money at the moment for for the you know the amateur show that i'm doing so but uh, yeah, so that's that's sound really. Sound is uh, nothing special. It's all from YouTube, uh, their their uh, music library, and uh, the audio is yeah out of Riverside nowadays most of the time for me. Well, we're using Zencaster at the moment, so that does the same thing that captures local recording, so you don't get the cut out like you were saying. But I mean, I had I had a huge problem with. Yes. Um, I don't know if you heard it. Uh, the other week, I put out uh, an episode with the the guys from Shouting is Funny who do the Chronicles of Wild Hollow. And when it came to trying okay. to put all that together, the audio, Zoom had completely... So at different spots during the conversation, I moved it so that it was back in sync with each other because it was comp- really yeah. badly out of sync with each other. Each file was... Um, Yes. And then when I resynced it with each other, I got later on in the episode, and it's back out of sync again. And I had to keep cutting and and that throughout the entire <laughs> two hour chat. I had to put that in line first, and then listen yeah. through to it to decide where I'm going to make edits and and clip bits. But that is, yeah, when you get it out of sync yeah. to that sort of degree where you've got. I mean, there were four of us in that conversation, so I've got four clip, four audio files that are out of sync, and I've got to line yeah. them all up with each other constantly. It's it's a lot more work than I, I actually thought it would be when I first started. Yeah, multitracks, it's great. And, for example, I did an interview, and uh, on my end there was a truck going past my house at the time, and it just reverberated through the whole room. So I know when I come to edit that podcast while my guest was speaking, I'll be able to silence my my side of that. So if it was obviously a uh, compiled file, uh, I couldn't do that. So there is, yeah, you know, there are great advantages to multi-track recording. However, the editing, like you said, if there's any sync problems, then that's <laughs> a that's a whole um, headache. That's a whole nother headache. So. Um, good thing about, I guess, with Riverside, they do have a backup that is a, a unified. They unify both tracks, uh, so if you uh, you are desperate just to get, you have that backup there if you need it, uh, if you have any trouble with the multi-track, so with the raw audio, so yeah, it's not too bad. But I'm I'm getting used to that. Uh, I, I they have a an option with Riverside where you can go live too, so that's something I've thought about doing in the future but there's probably no use at the moment until i have a definite idea of what i'd like to do with going live and i have enough people that would want to listen to it or get involved with it so there's not really anything you know i have that ability with riverside but i haven't used it as yet no but um while you were talking as well i suddenly thought of another one that's interesting which is um I was chatting with somebody, I think we were chatting during a group show, and I was saying, just, you know, just rambling and saying, oh, you know, this podcast about everything, this, that, and the other. And then I said, as, I just said, as a, just a passing thing, I just said, you know, this this probably a podcast out there for fly fishing. 
And then I looked, and now in my feed, I've got a fly fishing podcast to listen to <laughs> at some point because you know I'm trying to get all ba- hit all bases with the show and get guests from all different types of shows. What's the most yes. niche podcast that you've come across that you can think of? Niche. Um, oh, I, it was actually on another podcast. It was actually on, I think it was Podcast Garage, which yep. is Tanner Campbell, Jeff Townsend. Yeah, you know the guys? Yeah. So they interviewed a guy who did a podcast about portaloos and the portaloo <laughs> industry. <laughs> <laughs> and this it's guy, brilliant. yeah, this yeah. guy got a fan, he got a big following. He got industry sponsorship to the point where he actually quit his job and and did the podcast while he was traveling around um, America with his wife, yeah, uh, in a caravan. Uh, yeah, that was, and I thought that was, and and the point of the the show, I guess, that they were trying to make was you. You don't. You can be specific with your podcast and do really well. You don't have to be really broad with the areas that you cover. Um, this th- that was the most niched podcast that I've ever heard of, to be honest. Uh, and it was a funny niche as well. And uh, but he did really well. He did really really well. I can't remember the name of the podcast, unfortunately. But uh, if you go to Podcast Garage, it's uh, actually I could probably do that for you let's have a look uh podcast garage because i remember the the garage this is makes for fantastic podcasting um it let's does. have a look it's um you know i'm writing this down to check it out no uh cre- creating a tra- it creating creating a personal brand strategy strategy with dave zell from Beer in front? No, that wasn't it. Ah, uh, uh, here it is. Content strategy of a successful podcast with Pete, host of Get Flushed. Get so it's flushed. Called Get flushed. <laughs> um, and he was oh. he was wonderful. He was he was a he was a great guest too for those guys. He he was uh, very composed and he was very down to earth. And his story was very interesting. So that's the most niche podcast I've ever listened to or heard about. How about I yourself? I can't believe I've just written that down to check out. <laughs> Fair enough. What about yourself, Marv? What's the most niche? I'm interested. Uh, what's the most niche podcast uh, you've listened to or heard of? Um, I, I still think that fly fishing one is probably the most niche that I've come across, really. But Yep. I need I need to get more yeah, I need fair to enough. get more niches, really. But I'm looking forward to listening <laughs> to it. That's for sure. Oh, good. Yeah, very but, good. Yeah, look, I think we're very similar in terms of we try to get a lot of different types of podcasters on our show too, so people don't get bored. So uh, that's been something that has definitely been uh, a strategy of mine when um, scheduling shows. So some shows have been yeah. uh, recorded after other shows, but I'd put them first because I don't want things to be to the same every week. I did have uh, last season, towards the end of last season, I had two hosts, oh, sorry, two, two guests within three shows that picked the same topic to count down. Um, but the, yeah. the good thing about that was the lists were the same in terms of the topic, but the reasons and the choice, the cho- choices and the reasons for the choices were very different in both guests, and that was really interesting for me to see as well. That you know we have the same topic, and then these these choices were so different, and they were very personal. The choices, and again, that's the whole intent behind getting people to do the countdown. And uh, but I try not to have that happen too often. Uh, it is the the guests. Uh, choice in terms of what they want to count down yep. but uh i'll also try to steer them towards something if i've done something like that already maybe you know let them know that and a lot of times they don't want to count down something that's been counted down the week before or two weeks before and they'll pick something else instead yeah i, I tried to do the same thing i mean i remember the first season of mine i uh, i had i think i had three or four beatles related podcasts 
that were recorded sort of close to each other. And I had to do the same thing there where I was basically holding back episodes because I thought I can't really have two or three Beatles related podcast guests on <laughs> yeah. consecutive weeks. So I had to hold yes. them back it like that. And, um, but what you were saying, I mean, that, that reminds me of something that I really, you know, it, it happens occasionally in podcast or happens a lot actually, where there's bits that, are unexpected in podcast, which like that with the list, you, you're always going to have, you might have similar, you know, su- subjects, but the reactions that you get from people will all be different. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. And these, these things that happen, you know, were accidents or unexpected reminds me of, um, uh, was it you I told about the Mission Impossible episode, that they do a po- this podcast about Mission Impossible and for their, I think the 100th or 200th episode, they had the director on Chris McQuarrie, who's directed oh, okay. a few of them. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and he said to them, he said, he said, yeah, he says, I'll guest on your show again, because he's been on before. He says, uh-huh. I'll guest on this special episode of yours. He said, but he says, I'm controlling the Zoom call, not you, to these oh. people. And they said, oh, okay, like that. And then he said, because he says, I've got some people who I'd like, you know, just to bring in and out of the conversation. And he said, it'd be better for you as your show if you don't know that they're showing up, (laughs) essentially. Yeah. And so he kept bringing in people and bringing them out, like technicians, people who do the editing, people who do the music, this, that, and the other. And then about an hour in, he said, oh, he said, I've got one of my best friends coming in now. And they spoke to Tom Cruise for 45 minutes. You're kidding. No. Oh, no. That's amazing. And it was an absolute shock. They never expected it, obviously, because it's Tom Cruise. But yeah. what, what a pull that was for them. That's amazing, yeah. that And obviously, as a surprise, they would have been overjoyed to to have someone like that on their show. That's that's crazy. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. So but what, but, what uh, is that? What uh, ep- oh sorry, what podcast? What's what's the, the name of that podcast? Oh, you know we're going to have dead air again here. There's a lot of editing going to go on here. <laughs> that's what right. was the name of that podcast? Uh, because I'm interested to actually listen to that. That that sounds like a, a really good uh, episode. Yep. So if I do that and then do, oh, it's called Light the Fuse. Yep. Okay. Uh, I don't know if very appropriate. I'll just show you that. So. It looks like that. Yep. Yep. That's Not a the problem. Thing. Okay. I'm going to chase. Okay. Yep. I'll chase that and one down for sure. I don't know which number episode. Well, it be t- it would be 200 because they're on episode 212 now. That's okay. just come out last Friday. So I'm guessing let's go back 200 just to make sure. Do, 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 do. You know, I need to I need to do some music here for little bits. You know, like interstitial music. I think. Yep, that's the one. Episode two hundred third of August. Fantastic! But it's All a right. long. It's a long episode. It's about two and a half hours, three hours long. That episode. That's all right. I'll uh, if yeah, it's quite a get, like you said, to have Tom Cruise on a, a podcast. So I think I'll uh, I'll invest the time, give it a listen. I do like Mission Impossible as well, so yeah, yeah, me too. But you know, um, um, the thing is, with that, with with some podcasts, you know, that are longer, the best thing is when you listen to them, and it's like no time has passed at all. Mm. That, mm, that's definitely. the best. That's the best sort of longer podcast is when yeah. you listen to them and you haven't realised when it's done. You're like, you're like, oh, bloody hell, is that finished already? Yeah. And that's 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 a sort of uh, a feeling I get with a, a Dan Carlin podcast. You know, they yeah. are sometimes six hours long, but but uh, excuse me for a sec. Sorry, Marv, you have to edit that bit out. My son decided to uh, come home from gym and be very very loud. That's okay. Louise had just left me some food. Oh, lovely! <laughs> very good. Well, I'm going to have a sip of my drink. It's the morning for you over there at the moment? It is morning, yeah. It's quarter past ten in the morning. Ah, oh, lovely. Lovely. So for you, it's what, quarter past nine? 
uh, what's the time at the moment? It is, yes, quarter past nine. Exactly right. Yep. There we go. Uh, have a bite. That's all right. <laughs> I don't mind. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got to have sustenance to, to uh, carry on a conversation. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll change what I've put down as the note there as to where to clip. <laughs> to edit, yeah. <laughs> Take it all out. Yep. But um, I was going to say one of the interesting things about, you know, shows like that uh, is that they're all friends with each other, these shows. So people who make that show, the, like The Fuse, they're friends with other spy-related podcasts and you find that a lot in the podcasting world where you'd actually think that they they wouldn't want to have anything to do with each other because they'd see each other as competition. Whereas, as we both know mm. from experience, that's not the case with most of us. I mean, we, we do similar podcasts and we're friends and I'm friends with Marie who does the Mastercast and with Ariel Nissenblatt who does Feedback with Earbuds and they suggest podcast people to listen to as well so there is virtually mm-hmm. none of that there everybody gets on for the most part and that's something that i noticed really early and i thought you know i, I loved about the podcasting world and the podcasting community that you know most people are trying to help everyone else and, and that's why you know that was my motivation for for doing my show to begin with and uh, you have, like you said, we're prime examples. We we do a show that's very, very similar to each other. And uh, we've been, you know, I, I consider you a friend, obviously, because we've, we've, we've uh, done now each other's shows and we've spoken and kept up with each other on social media here and there. And uh, uh, the, the, the amount of people that I've been able to meet and, and have a, or even a long distance relationship with in terms of, you know, finding out how their lives going and you know not not talking to them every day but talking to them on a consistent basis and uh it's it's amazing and I've, I've never come across any sort of negative uh feedback in in terms of competition when it comes to my show with another show uh like you know or or her, there I have heard of it with with certain uh other shows uh you know there are uh, beefs going around between shows but sometimes yeah. it's also for you know other reasons not so much that they're in the same genre or category but you know they've said something uh, about someone personally or something like that so which you always that's always going to happen but in terms of shows competing with each other uh, you, you'd be hard pressed to see a lot of that um in the community as far as i can see and maybe i'm not in it enough to to see it but I hardly ever come across it. I mean, even to the extreme where, did you catch that I did a uh, a James Bond anniversary special recently? I didn't group see that chat. One. No, I didn't see that. And, one, uh, and I think there were all together, if I remember correctly, nine or ten of us in the conversation. Oh, and everybody's <laughs> all from different podcasts. You see that were all spy yeah. related or Bond related. Yes, and it was great because everybody was just sort of like friendly and chatting, and the the chat just, you know, it was just all, and it was incredible to to experience having yep. everybody from all these different shows. That in any other industry, it'd be like, well, I'm not having anything to do with you because you're my competition. These <laughs> yeah. don't have that problem at all. You get yeah. them in there talking about the subject that they love, and they just go, they you just, <laughs> you know, bit of a it's hard to shut them up. You, you just light the fuse and off they go. Yeah, it's hard to shut them up in the end. So it's, uh, yeah, they end up talking over it because they're talking about the same thing. They get all excited and sometimes they're talking over each other. And yeah, it's just because they're so passionate about what they're talking about. And, you know, competition doesn't even enter their heads. It's just a matter of they're, they're all on the same page and they're just passionate about what they're talking about. And I love hearing that. I love hearing. And, you know, that's one of the things I hope comes through in my show that I, I really enjoy talking to the, my guests. It's I'm really interested in, you know, I, I can see it with you, with your show. You're interested yeah. in the person that you've got on the show. It's not just a guest to have on to, to make some content and to get a show out. You're actually interested in, you know, what the person has to say, what their background is, uh, you know, what their passion is, why they're so passionate, you know, whether it be the Beatles or 
some movie or you know comic yeah. books which is uh you know with Stuart World Order I really love that that you know it came out from both sides from from his side and your side that you were both really into your comic books and you're really passionate about uh, uh the comic book culture so uh and that was great to listen to so that was really good I really enjoyed that show I really enjoyed being on this show as well for we we <laughs> We ended up having to talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 on this show. I saw that, yeah, because of the, the choices, the, the way it worked out. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, they weren't very good choices, were they? <laughs> <laughs> so what it was, uh, it was Turtles 3, uh, Turtles in Time, wasn't it? Yes, that's the one. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not but, the best one. But. <laughs> but now I've got a copy of that Vin Diesel film that I that I – could have chosen that was one of the three that choices i've actually okay. got that on dvd to watch at some point because oh, i good. almost made it that but i've heard that's a dreadful film I, which one was that i can't remember which one was oh, the choice it called? blood is it blood blood shot or something or other oh, i can't remember now okay but okay I should know because it's a, a Valiant Comics. There you go. And all my comic knowledge, it's a Valiant Comics character. So um, <laughs> they were trying yeah. to start a Valiant Comics, uh, you know, their own universe or something in films. But that yes. was the first one that came out. And they were like, may- maybe maybe we'll have maybe to not. rethink this. Yeah, fair enough. A bit like oh, Tom Cruise's uh, Mummy film was supposed to be the first of the <gasps> Universal Universe, God. wasn't it, to films? Yeah. And it really tanked badly, and they're just like, uh, no, we won't bother with these. Killed it. Well, it's funny you say that. We, I uh, was talking about movies that killed a franchise with uh, one of my guests the other day, and he chose uh, Star Wars number eight. Uh, um, is it uh, Force Awakens or I can't remember which one number eight is because really I don't care after four, five, and six. They're the only ones I watch. Um, but uh, I, I thought, uh, 20, I think it was 2017, The Tom Cruise Mummy. I, that was a movie that killed a franchise. Yeah. That was a movie that was just like, no, we're not doing that again. And now they're discussing getting Brendan Fraser back to do another, another mummy film Ooh. from the earlier period, that sort of yeah. style. He's going to have to get in the gym. So, hey, this is Tim from Bad Counsel. <laughs> yeah, you want some good gym. counsel? Yeah, a lot more of Brendan Keep listening to the smooth, to be, dulcet so tones of Mar he's, uh, on yeah, Pods he's Like Us. Really, he's funny. So. I'm glad he's come back. But um, where was it? I was going to go off on somewhere else there, another tangent. I can't remember what it was now. Um, oh, yeah. So I was I was guess, I guessed on another show last week uh, tracing owls which okay. looks at paranormal and cryptid and yep. which which was an interesting you know invite into a show and he said to me I said to him I said well, what do you want me on there for and he said he said that he was intrigued because I don't know whether you have the same thing but he was intrigued in how we approach shows where we're discussing subjects that we you know didn't don't have that much knowledge of and he said how do you approach that and how do you how do you actually invite these people onto your show and get into them enough for that and I was saying to him that I used as an example I had a sports show on that that, you know and I said to them I said that while they were on my show, I was explaining to them that what intrigued me, I said that what really gets me is, is if, if you listen to a podcast that isn't necessarily something that you know that much about, if they can get you really, really interested in it because of what they are as people and how they approach the subject, I said that is a winning winning thing is because if they can get you interested when it's not something that you – are necessarily understanding of that is where it all comes from. And I said, and then that expands my knowledge and interest in these subjects a lot of the time. Oh, a hundred percent. That's what I was talking about before with passion. If that passion comes across from the, the hosts of the show and you can, you can get in on that wave. Uh, one of the guys from, uh, I think the podcasting group that we're both in uh, our cynic culture, 
those yeah. guys. Um, I, I'm not a big drinker and I don't really claim any knowledge in terms of what's a good drop and what isn't, but I listen to those guys and they're really interesting and they really know their stuff. And I like to listen to them every now and then because I, I do find what, you know, their take on, it's not just like, oh, this is a good brew. Yeah, it's a bit, you know, a bit malty and or whatever sort of thing. It's They, they go a little bit more in depth. And, uh, I, yeah, I, I really enjoy their show, even though it's not something if you had said to me, okay, you get to pick some genres to, to listen to. What they cover is not something I would normally be interested in. But I listened to them because they were in the podcast group. And I, I'd, I'd really actually like to talk to them. Uh, I, I think they'd be be great to talk to because they know their stuff. They run a, a, a good show. Uh, you know, it's, it's the production values are really good as well. And um, you know, they, they they're really good with social media also. But the passion for what they do came across. Um, and that's you know, like I, I, I like to think I'm so you know, sports something I'm interested in. I love movies. I love books obviously i used to be a, a voracious reader at one stage uh i love music but uh i don't claim to be an expert in any of them but you know uh something like that was never on the radar until i listened to their show and uh they got me interested so yeah book related shows just in passing have you have you have you tried the uh, sense of shelf or the book realm no i haven't either of those two um, no, I haven't had probably because I haven't had a lot of time to be reading uh, of late. Uh, I've sort of gone back to reading a, a book just recently um, that I'm interested in because I'm interested in politics. It's what I did at uni and things like that. So it's something I wanted to, to reread. It was a fluctuating fortune. So it was about business and, and politics and the, the, the tie between the two. So I, I, like to read sci-fi and fantasy generally and uh, i haven't probably had a chance to read either uh, of late so books haven't been on the horizon or a, a, a priority at the moment but i really should listen to a good book po- podcast because one you know they're, they're interesting but two i'd yeah. actually like to have someone on my show from a, a book podcast as well because it's something i haven't covered yet so well, John John Wesley, who does uh, Sense of Shelf, his is interesting because he he has like different. So he splits his into different areas. So he, one one little sub sub series is had is, is fantastic, where he's called it the uh, the pen is mightier than the sword, and he looks mm-hmm. at how these people's writing was affected by their own experience of being in wars or in the armed forces or of being in war zones. And that, mm-hmm. that's an interesting one, and that's sort of shortish, uh, twenty minutes at the most episodes. And then he has uh, long conversations. He'll pick a guest, and they'll discuss their favourite book with him. And that's a longer form uh, show. And then he's got all these different little little sub series that he does, and that makes it intriguing because it's it's mixed from one to the other to the other. He, and he's got all these different types of show essentially okay. there within this big idea of it being all about books and about reading oh that's fantastic I'll, I'll definitely i'll check that show out for sure because as i said that's something i probably haven't covered and i, I do want to actually you know it's it's missing from uh, my lineup uh, a good book podcast and i'm just interested myself to listen to a good book, book podcast because there's there's lots of you know great uh, authors out there that don't get enough recognition and you know i like i said there's certain genres i I'm, i probably read more than than others uh and most of the, the big names in in those genres I, I i do read but i like some of the independent stuff too so um and some of the fan fiction from star wars and things like that i've i've actually got a lot of that as well um yeah. and uh yeah it's just it's it's i've been it's been one of those things that's missing that I'll have to I'll have to uh, fix. Okay, uh, and I've already I've also mentioned the book realm to you. That's another one yes. where somebody talks about their their reading. Noted that down. And yeah, noted that is, down. For is sure. fascinating one. You'll love this one. Lydia's Booktastic podcast. Lydia's Booktastic podcast. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll have to so, write that one down as well. <laughs> that one. 
that is that is something that's got me intrigued in something another that, that's took me off to another another area because that one Lydia's booktastic podcast Lydia is young she started I think when she was seven this show started oh okay. she was seven years old and she presents it with her dad Ken Sweeney who does the comfortable spot and she's talking about children's books that she's interested in with mm-hmm. with her dad with with Ken and she'll review the books and then give you an idea of what the book's about give it a rating and occasionally she gets actual writers of children's books on as guests as well and oh, that's amazing. fascinating so there you've it to that's it it's two that it's two marks you've got the book side of it all mm-hmm. but it's also introduced me to another area that's not very known to a lot of people but I think it's an interesting and really good part of podcast is young podcasters, you know, that are like younger children, yes. technically yep. children, yep. teenagers who are doing their own podcast. Cause we also know um, from one of our little groups on Instagram, Sanjida, who does Sanjida yes. says, which is, who is a teenager. Yeah. And that's another interesting area to look into and, um, at the moment, me, myself, and Ariel Nissenblatt, we're arranging to put, do a group chat together with with young podcasters to discuss the world of podcasting with them as a group chat as well. Oh, fantastic! Oh, that'd be that'd be really interesting. I'd, I'd definitely give me the time when that's happening. I'd, I'd love to uh, to to listen in if it's, if it's going to be live. If not, just let me know when the episode's out and. Uh, I'd love to listen to that because, yeah, it's. I think this is a really exciting time if you're, you know, young and, you know, when you're young, you've got a lot of opinions and, uh, you know, it, the world's fresh and you look at it in a different way to, than us crusty old guys sort of thing. Yeah. So they have a perspective that we probably, we, we can't really appreciate uh, uh, being the, the age we are and it, it's great seeing through their eyes and, and I know with my three boys, I'd love them to do something. Whether it yeah. with even if it's not with me, I'd love them to because they're, they're 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 good kids and they have pretty interesting and meaningful conversations, mostly arguments about certain <laughs> topics. Um, and a lot of them are about around music and around movies. Um, sometimes it's around fashion. It just just depends, but. Uh, you know, and it's not just you know throwing insults at each other. They actually do like to argue, and uh, it's not until someone comes up with a point that the other person can't refute that they start to actually throw punches. So, <laughs> but but no, they're, they're they're pretty good. I'd I'd love to see them do something, and um, they're you know it's a fresh take. It's through see, seeing the world through young eyes is very different to the way we see things, and you know we have. I, I guess you can say, you know, uh, age sometimes, uh, not always, but sometimes brings wisdom, but but also it clouds your judgment in terms of opportunities and alternate paths that the kids don't see the barriers to. You know, we see barriers where they see opportunities sometimes. And, uh, uh, yeah, I think that would be really interesting. So that, that that's great. And, look, it might be a, something that I have to look into in the future in terms of getting a, a, a young pod podcaster on as a guest that'd be i'd be really up for that i think that'd be a a, a great uh, episode yeah same here but I, I find it you know it's like we both said before both of us in our own shows we've said that the best thing is that podcasting gets those niches that the normal commercial you no know, radio and that don't get get and that is a real niche in itself to get sort of like teenagers and younger people making their own podcast for people mm. of their own ages, but obviously, you know, older people can listen to them as well. Mm, where there's no way that a commercial station could could do that. And I just find it interesting that that, that is just suddenly, it's blossoming and you can actually see it growing and growing and it's a nice thing to see. Oh, for sure. And I know I was speaking with my my eldest boy just recently about you know podcasting and I thought you know what you guys need to do is you need to a podcast devoted to the EDM sort of culture here in Melbourne 
you know, the trance and hard style event because there's always events, you know, and you could get there's always DJs coming out and they make you know great guests and uh, there's always events that you could promote and it's actually a, a, a niche that I think could be explored. And, you know, you can't have someone my age doing that sort of a, a podcast, even though I love hard style music. No one's going to listen to me talking about, you know, that sort of culture. So, you know, you need someone that's in their, their early 20s and really invested in that, that, that culture and going to all the events. Uh, that could be, a, I think, I think that'd be a great podcast and it would service a more than niche community. I mean, there's a there's a lot of kids that go to these events and pay a lot of money to go to Tomorrowland and all that sort of stuff. And not that Tomorrowland here in Melbourne, but there's always some sort of a a rave or a uh, an event happening, and it's usually multiple uh, ones over a weekend. But if you could you could talk to the promoters, you could talk to the the the, the guest DJs. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, aspects you could explore with a podcast like that, and I. And I sort of mentioned to him, but he's not really interested in that. He's just more interested to going to the events and enjoying the music. So, Well, what you could do is you could just, if you want to, because, you know, what, what they're talking about is fascinating. You could just have two microphones on a desk or whatever, or have a microphone yourself if you want, and just say to them, just talk. Hmm. And then they just talk as they are, as you know, just in the normal way. And then make mm. a show from that. Yeah, yeah. Look, it, it's, it's something I, I think it's worth exploring, and uh, I'd like him to to do something like this. And I think he'd be good at it. Uh, he's you know quite articulate, and he uh, he's got a, a quick mind. And I think he'd ask really good uh, probing questions, and uh, he'd he'd make the guests feel at home. Uh, he, we we have really good discussions and uh, sometimes arguments about certain things and whether or not the latest Batman was any good, uh, <laughs> which it wasn't, I don't think. But anyway, that's another whole podcast in itself. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, so, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe something might come of it, but uh, <laughs> at the moment probably not. <laughs> so it is a bit, we weren't sort of, so originally I put it down as what the one pod game and I thought, no, we can't can't really do that. Can't really pick one pod for each subject. So if I come out with subjects, are you able to give like three suggestions to people? Oh, I could you try. Think? I could try. Okay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'll see how we go. Um, like I said, I've been I've been knee deep in uh, audio dramas of late. So, uh, but I'll I'll see if I can uh, help out. <laughs> well, I was going to say that's where we're going to start. Is the easy one. Three audio dramas. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's easy. So I'll start with the most recent one, which I, I binged, and it was amazing. It's. Uh, do you want me to go into the actual what they're about? Or you could do. You could do. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, Nevermore Hollows is uh, a great independent uh, horror fiction audio drama. Um, it's a set in a, a town called Nevermore Hollows, and like I, I think I mentioned to you when we were talking before the show, very Lovecraftian in a lot of the imagery and a lot of what goes on. Uh, but there's there's nods to a lot of the normal horror tropes in the episodes as well. Uh, I've, I just became enamored with it when I, I started listening to it straight away. It's it's amazing. So that, that would be one. Uh, the first real audio drama I listened to that I, I got hooked on was one I, I listened to. I, was, I wanted something that I could listen to that was had a lot of episodes. It, it ran for at least an hour So because I was out in the garden and I was going to be out in the garden all day. So I started listening to a show called Tannis. Yep. And uh, Tannis is an amazing show. And, uh, yeah, that's that's a really good show, uh, I would suggest. And if you, if you like something a little bit more offbeat, um, I think this was a really clever audio drama, Archive 81. Uh, yep. Now, I implore you not to watch the Netflix adaptation because it's horrible. It, they destroyed what is a magnificent podcast. Um, it's a very clever podcast in terms of the 
the way that the podcast is centered around audio and sound and the story is told in a sort of found footage way for part of it and then it, it changes it changes often in terms of from episode to episode in terms of perspective um, but there are some things that run you know they, they, it does tell a story but uh, again it's a little more of a, a horror podcast it's it's not quite the same as Nevermore Hollows. It does tell a, a story that is very offbeat though. And the the tricks and the way that they actually use sound and the music in that show is is fantastic. It's amazing. I really liked Archive 81. So yeah, those three be Nevermore Hollows, Tennis and uh, Archive 81. Okay. I'll throw three in. Um, Bright Sessions is, is a great show about where – uh, because you you actually featured I, that on one of your guest reviews, didn't you? Yes, yes. One of I your remember you, you mentioned that uh, you uh, you said, "Damn you!" Now I can't stop, or something like that. that you can't stop listening <laughs> to it. So <laughs> I've listened to the whole lot now. Yes, yes, yep, yeah, the whole lot. Uh, so that one it starts as um, uh, a psycho is it a psychiatrist psychologist named Dr. Dr. Bright. Yes. She yes. she has uh, young people with abilities come to her for help and advice and basically to do a job as a psychiatrist. Uh, so you'll have people there who are, uh, t- there's a time traveller, uh, there's people who have, like I said, all sorts of abilities. And it's, if you're into the Marvel superhero thing and, and that, and it it's, it's just brilliant. It's really well written and, the, the sound of it, the production, the 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 actual act, voice acting is uh, second to none. Yeah, it's really good. Um, the the only uh, episodes that I was all, I I sort of screwed up my face a little bit at was the uh, the musical episode that they did. <laughs> that was a bit of a, a weird one, but uh, outside of that, I really enjoyed that. Um, and yeah, I, that was a that was one that I uh, I was looking at recommended shows and for some reason that came up because i had i had listened to tennis and that had come up and i thought oh what's this and then i i read the blurb on it and went oh sounds interesting and uh yeah definitely great show great show well the musical one then you might not might not like the one i'm about to say them chronicles of wild hollow uh i don't know that one that is like um how i always say that is it's like putting Monty Python, the Muppets, and the Goons, put them into a pot, and then see what you come out with at the other end. Well, I like Monty Python, and I like Muppets, and I like the Goons, so, yeah, uh, I think I'd probably like it. So <laughs> I grew up with my grandparents, so we listened to uh, a lot of, you know, I, I was brought up on shows like It Ain't Our Fault Mum and yeah. Dad's Army and, you know, Love Thy Neighbour and a lot of English humour. And... Um, you know, Bill Oddie and all those guys. So, um, yeah, I'd probably enjoy it. So I will. I'm going to check that one out for sure. You would, and they're only they're only three episodes. So it, it'll be a three episode arc. So you've got the first trilogy, and then the second trilogy. And at the moment, they're doing a season of shorts. So each episode in itself is one story. Okay. This this season, whereas, like I said, the previous two seasons. They are three story arcs. So even there, if you wanted to binge, you're only going to be binging for under two hours, yes. I think, for, or just over two hours to get all three episodes of the first and all three episodes of the second season. So you can okay. you could do it in whichever way you want to with them. Yeah, that and sounds that's, good. Yeah, and that's really good production as well. And they do their they do they do their own foley work and everything. Oh, fantastic! That's that's great. Yeah, I'll I'll check them out for sure. And fine, I was going to say the finally, and this might be seen as a bit biased because bit of an announcement coming here. So, um, the Icarus Complex, uh, Lyndon, he's uh, based a story. It's based loosely on his own life experiences about a guy who who's young and. He makes questionable choices here and there, like a lot of us did when we were younger. <laughs> and it's about what happens from that in his relationships and he messes up and how, you know. And I said to him recently on uh, when he finished his most recent season, 
I actually said to him, I goes, I said, um, damn you, Lyndon, you made me actually tear up during one, do, at the end of one of your episodes. Because that's another thing with dramas. If they can get you to feel that emotion there, it's something really special for them to be able to get, get you where it hurts. Oh, yeah. To get you in the feels, for sure. Yeah, that, that's that's not easy to do. So especially with just an audio um, yeah. podcast. So yeah, that's that's a, a, a fair effort. And the announcement there is that I'm actually one of the voice actors for the next season. Oh, amazing! Congratulations, very good. <laughs> <laughs> I just that's put great. His, I just I just said said to him. I just said to some people. I just said, you know, because before doing this. I had the same thing, you know, I, got, I was sick of listening to my own voice. I thought, oh, God, who's going to listen to this? And you get that used to it eventually that you almost get, um, I want, I don't know. You. So I've got to this period where I've thought, you know, if he wants an, an individual and different voice, yep. then I'm there for him and he's saying, yeah, I've got exactly the part that I need you to do the voice for. So he's sending me the script um next week i think oh that's fantastic that's really good so i have listened to that show because we we yeah. were uh discussing doing a show together uh because you you actually suggested uh i i listened to the show and get in t- contact with him so we did that but uh, he's been pretty busy and but i have listened to uh a fair few episodes uh of his show and it, it was actually really good and I, I did ask him i said you know whether it was you know, biographical, and like you said, it's loosely based on his uh, his uh, you know younger years, and um, some of the stories are you know uh, they're, they're they're dramatized <laughs> as such, and then some are a little bit more spot on. But uh, either way, it, it makes for a, an interesting listen, that's for sure. Yep, and hey there, not this for is Bobby with the Rock Guys podcast. You are listening to, listen to Marv C. Yeah, definitely. On the so. Like us podcast. <laughs> um, Check them yeah, out for sure. But uh, it, it contains, um, you know, people. They do talk about drug use, alcohol use, sex is quite sex and stuff, a big thing yeah. in there, and this yeah. some this some language in there as well. Yeah. So, oh well, you've uh, you've put out the disclaimer. So, <laughs> all good. That's all good. So we've done audio drop. Blimey, we talked about that for a long time. Three film-related shows. Film-related shows. Okay, so um, let's have a look. Let's have a look at what I'm listening to at the moment to see if there any of those are uh, film-related. Uh Ah, I'd have to probably go back to stuff that I've listened to um, before I started listening to the stuff that I'm listening to at the moment. Uh, there's nothing that I'm listening to at the moment that are, are really film-related shows. I have listened to stuff in the past, like the, I think you've had the guys on from The Real. And uh, what else is another one? I'm just trying to think of what else I've listened to. You might have to do some more editing here. <laughs> okay. We'll look in this podcatcher, what I've got here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, I just, how could I forget this? The Countdown uh, Movie and Television Review Show. It's a, actually a, uh, an Australian show. The guys are out of Perth. I had them on my, um, I think, season two as well, early in season two. Uh, amazing show. Very, very funny. Uh <laughs> Wayne, the co-host, is uh, is quite an individual. That's a, a really good one. And uh, we have been watching a couple of yeah. uh, English lads, which uh, and one of the, the guys uh, from that show is a big uh, No Man's Sky um, player as well. So I do follow him on Insta, uh, mostly on Twitter, actually, I think it is, that he, he posts a lot of stuff on there. And one of my boys, the youngest one, has gotten into No Man's Sky. So I... I sort of talked to him about it, and uh, but yeah, there's uh, mm-hmm. so we've been watching uh, the Countdown Movie and Television Review podcast, and what else have I? Um, there should be one more. Uh, I'll tell, well, it's not really a, a, a dedicated movie podcast, um, but uh, the Tennis Podcast they do a lot of lists, and they they usually you know break down a lot of the lists involve a lot of movies. 
So, uh, yeah, I, 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 it's funny. I, it's, it's probably a, a, a genre or a category I, I don't listen to a lot because I don't want a lot of spoilers because there's a lot of, a lot of movies um, that have come out that I haven't had a chance to see. And that's why some of the we have been watching shows I haven't been able to listen to because I, I don't want to know what's going on with the movies. So I've stayed away from a lot of those types of shows um, purely because I don't, I don't want the spoilers. <laughs> so, yeah. I've had that problem with the recent episode of Phase Zero where they did a uh, spoiler-filled discussion about the new Black, Black Panther film, Black Panther oh, okay. Wakanda yep. Forever. Yep. Yeah, and I, I sort of like because that's one of my. I always listen to that show, one of those shows, and I thought, oh, do I listen to it and spoil it for myself, or do I leave it and then potentially I'm left month or two down the line where I'm going to be listening to an old episode, and I just went for it and listened to the episode because I just thought, you know, fif- you know, fifty two in a couple of weeks, I might have forgotten by the time I watched the film what they said. <laughs> yeah definitely that's uh look i understand it, it is it is one of those things where uh you enjoy their podcast and you you enjoy the way that they break down the movie and uh their opinions on it but uh it for me it unfortunately it, it i'd go into the movie looking for certain things and i like to go into a movie just fresh without i, like, I don't like to watch trailers and things like that because especially nowadays the trailers uh there's a lot given away, I think, in trailers nowadays. You know, it's uh, and they try to get the best bits to put in the trailers, and obviously, which is you know, obviously a smart marketing idea. But I try to stay away from all that so I can see a movie fresh the first time, and uh, you can't help but you know have it spoiled. I think listening to a lot of the shows and. They do a good job with their podcasts, so what will happen is I'll, I'll sometimes just go back and listen to a, one of their older shows that I haven't um, listened to and and see what they thought about a movie that I have seen. Yeah. And and that's usually enjoyable as well, especially, like I said, the Countdown Movie Podcast, um, the boys out of Western Australia, uh, they, <laughs> they're funny. Yeah, they're pretty funny. They, they give each other a lot of uh, crap as well, so... <laughs> So I'm going to say, uh, first up, Bill Reads Bad Reviews. I don't know if you've heard that one. Uh, Bill, Bill, he um, basically finds, I think it's six reviews online about films that normally films that people love, you know, like classic films. Mm -hmm. Um, And he'll read these bad reviews that people have left about about these films. I mean, one of them made me howl when he was talking about Star Wars, you know, episode one, you know, New Hope or Star Wars, as we used to call it, the first one in, 90, you know, the 70s one. And yeah. somebody was reviewing that and they, uh, they they discussed how, you know, how could the, um, how could the visual effects be worse than they were in the first film? You know, because to them, the first film was Phantom Menace. <laughs> not, not, and they're not realizing that actually that that was filmed beforehand without oh, okay. CGI, and and then they, they and then they said, "Oh, why did they have this old guy replace you and McGregor as well?" Well, that that's what I was about to say. That person would be very young. Yes. <laughs> so, um. so, so yeah. So he reads bad reviews that people have sent in about these films, and then he gives his own opinion that he calls the BRBR review. So his own opinion. Okay, so that's an interesting take. On yeah, film. definitely. I ha- I have heard you mention that show actually, lis- listening to your episodes, and um, I, I did think it was a, an interesting. It was, you know, it's a it's a different way of approaching uh, breaking down movies or you know, reviewing uh, movies. It's something that's a little bit out of the norm. You know, lots of shows are dedicated to reviewing movies, but uh, that was a, a different sort of a take on it for sure. I thought so. And then uh, another one I'm going to suggest, we've already discussed this, Stu World Order. He, They will look at a different random comic book related film every episode. And he has an interesting release schedule. So he releases on the 2nd, the 12th and the 22nd of every month. And he calls okay. it The Twos, which is <laughs> of course. different. Yes. 
So, so you know when they're going to come out. I know now, looking at this, because we're recording 16th of November, I know in six days I'm going to have a new episode of that to listen to. Oh, very good. So. Yeah, that's good. I, and I did enjoy your episode with him. He, he seemed like a fun host. So I'm going to check his um, po- podcast out as well, So for sure. But we were saying now, you know, what people, some people don't realise is what is seen has as a comic book related film. So, you know, so if you go into go expand that to graphic novels, you can go into something like Road to Perdition with Tom Hanks is essentially mm. a comic book related film, really. You yeah. know, so it's amazing how wide that actual subject is. Well, I didn't know that until I listened to that show with you guys on it and you were talking about that. And I didn't realize that that was actually a graphic novel. So, yeah, yeah. that was that was interesting to hear. You, you brought up a couple, actually. I thought that's actually a comic book. <laughs> so it was, well, uh, yeah, it was interesting. Well, Wanted is a comic book as well, isn't it? That you had um, the um, Angelina Jolie film. I think that's based on a comic mm. book series as well. I didn't know it is. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, I didn't know. I, I really enjoyed that movie. Um, and the third one I'm going to say is one of my first film sack. They're still great. They're still going. I've been listening to them since 2009 when they started. It's just three blokes. It's almost like the original of what all these shows that, you know, they've got the two a penny. There's so many of them out there, but they are the original to me. They're just three blokes talking about a different film each week and breaking it down. And it's just, it still grabs me to this day. I still listen to those guys and and love their show to bits. Yeah, um, very good. Yeah, it's good when you've you've got something that's stood the test of time and in a, a genre that's actually probably overpopulated, uh, they still stand out. Uh, obviously, they, they put out a quality product. So I, I definitely have to put those onto a, a list as well. The list is getting quite long now of things I'm going to have to check out, but that's good. That's great. I've got plenty of time So while well, I'm driving during the day, so... <laughs> Okay, so three music-related shows. Ah, oh, music-related shows. I don't really listen to any music-related shows. Um, my the the shows I listen to probably, yeah, are more around uh, I guess society and culture in terms of, you like the NPRs and things like that. Uh, again, I'll have a look to see to make sure I'm not telling you any fibs, but ah. Uh, uh, No, you, yeah, there's nothing there that's actually music uh, centric that I that I listen to. Um, talking about a, a niche, yeah, off on a tangent a little bit. Uh, there's an, a niche one that I've been listening to recently, which I thought was pretty good. It was called Board Game Barrage, and there's yes. there a podcast just about board games. And I thought, how boring will this be? And I was you know, surprised that I was really interested. The guys like our scenic culture, they, they know their, their stuff and they make it interesting to listen to. So you don't really need a lot of insider knowledge to appreciate it. So that's, yeah, that's been really good, but um, no, there's not a lot on my, my list for, uh, for music. Sorry, mate. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit disappointing when it comes to that. So Right, everybody needs to contact him now. We make shows like that and say, check my show out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, feel free. I, I guess obviously that's a, a genre that I'm I'm missing out on. Uh, I love music, love to listen to music. So, yeah. Um, oh, there was one I used to listen to. It was called uh, The Rock. Was it called The Rock? I can't remember now. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. But that wasn't bad, but that was ages ago. That was a long time ago. But, uh, yeah, it's probably something that uh, I've been a little bit it's been remiss of me to, to actually get to again. What are your three? I'm interested now. Three music. Okay. I'll look at it from different angles. Um, I've had on, I mean, really, I don't know whether you, you call this a music show or not. But Ant Short, he does a show where he chats with the lead singer of Marillion, the uh, progressive rock band, Steve Hogarth, okay. and that's called The Corona Diaries, and it's based upon the lava chat, and then they'll break for what's called a diary reading because Steve Hogarth, the lead singer of Marillion, 
keeps extensive diaries or has done over the years. Yep. And he'll read from his published diaries like little bits and then they'll then when that's done, Ant will then ask him bits that have jumped out at him from the diary reading and he'll ask about. So it's looking at music from a different angle, from the angle of the actual artists themselves and how their lives have been affected by it and by the world of music. Okay. So that's yep. one. Yep. And occasionally they'll have, you know, guests on there as well that they'll they'll have discussions with. Um, okay. The second one is a bit, well, I'm going to say second one, but I'm cheating a bit because it's going, I'm going to say two in this. So uh, Matt Everett, who works for the BBC or has, and he has his own production company, he's done two shows that I've listened to that I've really been intrigued by. And one of them that is ongoing has been going on for a season, few seasons is called Digging Deep. And in that, okay. he has a conversation with Robert Plant of Led Zeppelin, and they will discuss a different song each episode from Robert's, you know, back catalogue. Normally, it's yeah, solo yeah. stuff, but occasionally they'll come out with like Led Zeppelin classic songs, and they'll discuss the, those. And that's interesting to listen to because you're listening to the artist discussing where the whole you know, where the inspiration came from and how the songs yeah, the came formation. about yeah, and yeah. the whole story. But the intriguing bit is not always talking about how the songs came about, but the little stories around it, like when he did his did one album or whatever, and he was talking about what he was looking for in musicians as to their, who they were as people and, and their music and the way that they looked at it. And now he always looks for people who are different. He's always trying to push himself into a different area and that's, mm -hmm. that's intriguing. But he also did, he also did a series where he did Phil Collins A to Z, where he spoke to Phil Collins and they basically over a few episodes went from the letters A to Z of Phil Collins career and picked out little bits from that. And he talked to Phil about these, about these little bits of Phil's career, like songs, like the studio and, and yep. then, you know, his, his work with uh, with Genesis and how his relationships are with them and this that and the other and that is intriguing to get the story from the people themselves that were that were there. Oh, definitely, yeah. Well, I guess you know the inspiration for different songs and you know the the thought processes and how long it took to actually write them, all that sort of stuff's really really interesting. Um, yeah, that that's that's great. Oh, again, I. I, I listen to a lot of music, but uh, I guess it's one of those uh, areas that I haven't probably uh, really delved into in terms of uh, the podcasts that are available. I know there's a heap out there, but um, yeah, I'll have to have a, have a, an, uh, another look. <laughs> so sports related podcast, and I'm not going to be very helpful with this one. Well, that's an easy one for me because uh, they're all hockey. <laughs> so um, I don't. I do listen to uh, other sporting podcasts for, that cover like NFL. I don't listen to any of the the podcasts that cover Australian sports. Um, funnily enough, but uh, there's three that I listen to in terms of um, hockey. One is uh, Pucks on Net, which is probably one of the original. Uh, shows I listen to, they're out of Vancouver, and uh, Ryan, the the host of that show, was my first ever guest. So he was uh, he had done the show for a fair few years before I started mine, and I I uh, picked his brain about how to do certain things when I was thinking about starting the podcast, and I asked him if he'd be my my uh, first guest, and he he was brave enough to say yes and came on and uh so that was great and i still listen to their you know i i, I uh, i've in, they've had a lineup change uh so they used to be four three guys and a girl and they've they've had a lineup change now with a, a new guy come in and two guys uh, go out but i still like their show and because they cover the team that i uh follow in the nhl i guess that's probably uh, a little bit uh, the reason why I, I like their show so much as well, uh, but they have really good insight into the sport and into what's going on. 
uh, in hockey. So, and because they've got a girl on there, I really like that show because she comes at a lot of subjects with a different mentality than they do. And, uh, and, but, you know, don't underestimate her. She knows her hockey as well, which is great. She knows her hockey history. So that's a, that's a, one of my faves. Uh, I listened to 32 Thoughts, which is uh, two industry professionals, media professionals who, uh, again, have fantastic takes on what's going on across the league. They, uh, they are, you know, West Coast centric, I guess, because that's where one of them um, comes from as well. Uh, really, really insightful look at what's going in, going on in the in the league at the time, and um, you know they talk about all the salary cap issues, who can go where, and uh, trades, and they they know the ins and outs of a duck's bum when it comes to you know what people can do to move this player to this team, and you know they'll keep half of his salary, but they'll miss out on a pick here, and they can't do that until he's played nine games and all the intricacies of the the league um they're they're really really knowledgeable and they're 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 media professionals they're both in the the tv media and the radio media um so they're really really good i I really enjoy them and there's a show called spitting spitting chicklets which is a, a euphemism for getting your teeth knocked out um, and <laughs> it's actually got two ex players on the show, and the host of the show um, uh, works. I think he used to work for Barstool. Well, the show's a Barstool sports show, and uh, they've got a producer and a host who are uh, not ex hockey players, obviously, and they're, they're just they're just uh, the, the the media guys. And then uh, there's um, um, two guys who are ex hockey players that give you the backstory to what goes on in, you know, the locker room and the culture behind the game, but they also break down games and teams and, and what's going on, but they have a unique perspective uh, that the, the guys from 32 thoughts really can't give you because they're media guys. Whereas yep. spit and chicklets, the two guys there, they're ex players. And one of them was, you know, a knuckle man sort of thing. One of the, the, the they, they used to call him goons he was the guy that used to, to fight a lot and it was it's really interesting when he talks about being that type of player in the league which you don't see as much nowadays and uh, what that entailed and you know how he would get ready for games and the, the nervousness of you know knowing he's going to have to fight this guy and fight this guy and um, but they've done amazingly well um, they put out uh, the pink Whitney, um, I think it's a vodka drink with you know and things like that. They've just they've just gone from strength to strength. It's uh they're, they're very funny. It's a very very um how can you say uh, testosterone fueled uh, <laughs> podcast. Yep. Um, but they're ex players, so you can't expect anything else from them. But the other two guys are, are really good foils for them too, and it's funny. A lot of times it's funny too. So uh, sometimes it gets a little bit too locker room, but. Um, yeah, but they're, they're three sport uh, podcasts I listen to fairly regularly, and unfortunately, they're all hockey. So, you know, I said I wasn't going to be able to be any good at here with this one, but I've actually got three. So, you ready Fantastic. for this? So, f- flame yes. bearers, okay, flame bearers that's normally about 30 minutes per episode, and each episode of that uh, is based on somebody who's had to overcome an issue to become a sports person so for the most part they are people who are who have been disabled to the paralymp para sports people mm-hmm. and it will talk to each of them and get the story behind where they're from and what they went through to get to where they are it's it's like an empowering show in a way it's it's showing you that yeah. despite all the odds you can still actually go out there and do these things so I find that a fascinating and it's a show that, you know, it, it gives you that positivity of like, you know, we were down here, but we still reached that goal that they were after. So that's an interesting yep. show. Okay. About sports. Fantastic. The eighth inning stretch, because a lot of people might know or might not know I'm a big fan of baseball. Okay. So the eighth inning stretch, that is an independent show. Uh, I mean, I've listened to some, 
more professional shows, you know, from like MLB and yep. uh, and others. Yep. But I like the idea. I like the approach of two people that just love the the sport, looking at it from a completely unbiased opinion. So they'll talk about the baseball scene um, as a whole, not giving bias or their own, you know who they support. They, they do occasionally mention who they support, but because it's more open and they're not negative to all other teams, makes it interesting. So that's uh, okay. presented by AJ and uh, Carson, who are fascinating to listen to. They've got so much you know, positivity and you can feel how they actually love the sport as a whole. Yeah, the passion comes the through. Yeah. It really does. Who do you follow um, in the MLB, by the way? Who, who do I follow? People... Yes. Americans don't like this, but I, I follow the Yankees a lot <laughs> okay. for the most part, who are very okay. it's not divisive. well looked at by, by, yeah, it's divisive. Um, Polarising, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I, I, you know, I, I follow a lot of the teams, you know, so I'll follow, um, you know, um, I also follow the Mets, New York Mets, um, yeah. and then... The, the Oreos from Baltimore, they're, they're a great team as well that I follow. And I'm trying to think of other teams as well. I mean, the Astros are a good team, but there's always the Astros versus the Yankees uh, issue because the Astros cheated the other year. So, you know, <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. that's a that's a big <laughs> thing that just that won't go away. Yeah, well, no, it's not like they hold grudges either, so especially in baseball. <laughs> <laughs> and I should know that no. I'm a White Sox fan, so. <laughs> right, brilliant. Good team. But, you know, and, yeah. then, uh, and then finally, you know, just to give a plug to a pre- to previous guests, TTM Sports, uh, two, two British lads, uh, both named James, which made interviewing them very interesting. I had them both <laughs> I on. I can imagine. What do you two think, people James? named James. James. Yes. James. James. James, what do you um, think, James? Um, I don't know, James. <laughs> <laughs> Always interesting when you have two people of the same name on the show. <laughs> add that with the James Bond one, where I think two people had the same name as each other. Okay. And that as guests yep. as well. Yeah. But TTM Sports, two people named James. Mostly it's about football. Uh, and they, they talk about boxing as well quite a lot. And so it's normally okay. about what's going on. But occasionally they will have really good interviews with up and coming boxers or footballers as well yeah oh look and now that you say that i i do listen to some mma shows as well because my uh my boys like like my youngest trains muay thai my eldest um trains uh um jiu-jitsu but they all three of them used to do kalkashin as well um so combat sports and things like that have been in the household since they were young um and you know i've been involved with it since i was 10 sort of thing so um we do listen to some some mma uh, uh podcasts as well so uh yeah i guess that's one that i forgot about as well so yeah yep and before i get it forget this come on phone work don't forget martin that there is an aussie nfl fantasy show as well Oh, Matty, Matty you know, C, yeah, Matty C, where, yeah, yeah, where those Fantastic. where those guys have their own fantasy American football league, don't they, in yes. Australia? Yes, which is amazing. It's been going so long too, and they again, you talk about passion with those guys coming across in a show. They love their uh, uh, well, their fantasy football for starters, but they they love the NFL, which is great. And I'm a big Dolphins fan, so uh, I, I do listen to their, their show occasionally. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're very passionate. Uh, I, and Matty's a great guy, fantastic guy. I'd, li- I'd like to actually have him on a, the show one day. Yep, I've had them on the show as well before. There you go, plug, plug, plug. Very good. So we'll go to this next one then. So ads... What's your what's your stance on advertising in shows? Advertising, um, I I I don't have a problem with it. Um, I don't think well because of the you know amateur nature of my show and amateurish nature of my show and things like that. I I, I feel a bit 
funny, especially at the start, about trying to put in an ad because <laughs> there wouldn't be too many people that actually hear it. So, you know, I, I couldn't go to anyone with a, a great marketing plan to promise that they, they were going to get a lot of worth out of putting an advert in my show, a lot of value. Uh, but I did actually start putting in an advert in the middle of my show for my podcast reviews. It was a a, an aggregator for all your reviews across a lot of different platforms that I signed up for. And I thought it was a, a really good um, service. And Daniel J. Lewis, the guy behind it, actually does the Audacity to Podcast, which is a really good podcast as well. And uh, I, I don't use that service anymore, not because it was bad or anything like that. It was actually, like I said, it's a great, it is a great service, but I probably – don't val- oh, I don't look into my reviews as as much as I used to. I um I I do obviously appreciate reviews, and you know I've had some 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 really nice reviews from people that have listened to the show and you know given me five stars, which I've you know it's been very humbling. It's 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 amazing, but I've sort of don't worry about listens and reviews and things like that as long as I'm I'm doing what I set out to do with the show. So I I would I would put ads into my show, but they would have to be related to podcasting in some way, I think. So I know that's really weird considering Joe Rogan, you know, the first thing that he ever did was the fleshlight, which had nothing to do with his podcast, I guess, but you know, helped him grow uh and you know people are putting in adverts and again i've got nothing against them putting in adverts for you know certain services in terms of you know manscape and all that sort of stuff i have no issue with that whatsoever i'd rather do adverts for things like PodPage or for riverside you know something to do with podcasting uh, i think that's a little bit more on brand and consistent with what i do um so yeah i've got no problems with ads and you know i have no problem with people trying to make money out of their show uh, as long as you put the effort in and you're trying to make the best show you can and you're not just you know getting together and um talking into you know your computer computer's mic and not really putting much effort into the show and expecting to get 14 million people to you know sign up for your patreon um, it doesn't work like that <laughs> so uh, yeah, I have no problems with ads. I, I just haven't sought them out myself as yet. So what advice would you give to people starting a podcast? Um, I I would say a lot of people say, you know, look at all the other podcasters, look for a niche. More importantly than look for a niche, I think just be passionate about passionate about what you're going to talk about, but have a format. Don't just like I said, get onto a mic and then just start rambling um, and expect everyone to listen in. Uh, put some effort into the show. Give it a format. Um, don't be scared to change that format if it doesn't work. And, yeah, be just be genuinely passionate about what you're talking about. I think that's that's the, the main reason – Oh, well, not the main reason. There's a lot of reasons why you see a lot of pod fade. People think, one, it's going to be easy and yep. it's there's not a lot of work involved in a podcast and there's even more work than I thought there was going to be in doing a podcast and I yep. think that's why you see a lot of pod fade. But also it's because I don't think people are, you know, put enough effort into f- creating a format that's consistent. And that makes it hard to do a show, especially if you're going to do a show every week. You you need a, a format that you can replicate and you're going to have to put the work in to make sure that you, you can replicate it. And I would say start with a monthly podcast and then if you want to make it bi-weekly, you can and then go to weekly if you want to. But uh, I, that's why I started with the idea of doing review shows and interview shows because I knew it was going to be hard probably to get guests to listen or to be on my show because I'm no one and they don't really get much out of being on a brand new podcast really because I have no listenership or listener base. So uh, I thought I'll do the reviews every second week because there's not as much pressure on me to get an interview show out. And interview shows too are pretty, you know, they're longer, they're harder to edit. There's a lot more production behind them. So it, yeah. it just with my time, 
um, or being time poor, it just made more sense. So I would say, you know, be can be realistic in terms of what you think you can get out and you can get out consistently and start small because you can always grow. Start with a monthly podcast and then see where you go from there. Um, yeah. I wish I'd have thought it. about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know how these people that do this, uh, couple of guys I, I listen to who do a daily podcast. Yeah. I don't know how they do it, really. And even though the podcast isn't that long, and I guess there's two of them so they can bounce off each other, and it's, it's I think, you know, doing a one-man show is and talking for an hour is so hard, and that's why I thought Sovereign Tech, you know, Brian Sovereign was so – he it took for three hours, he, and he was, wow. he was entertaining. Um, but – Doing, you know, committing to do that show every day is so hard, uh, but they do it. And I'm actually going to have one of those guys on to my show. Uh, I'm doing an interview with him in December. So, uh, wow. yeah. So it's I found it intriguing because they're on they're on a I think a 450 day run or something of not missing a podcast day. So <sighs> it's it's something crazy. So yeah. Um, but yeah, you can always grow. I think you can always add to your schedule. But uh, I think audiences don't take as kindly to you scaling back a show. <laughs> so no, it took some time for them, I think, to get used to that with me because I, I was, as I hinted at, when I started, I thought, I thought, oh, this will be easy. I, I can release two episodes a week. <laughs> I thought that. And I did that for a little while, and then after I'd finished, I mean, I kept that going for a while, and then I thought, it's almost like you, you're almost like The Walking Dead in, in out in the real world because you're spending that long getting the episodes edited yeah. and ready that you're not yeah. allowing yourself time to actually rest and sleep. Yeah, trying to do it's... it that that quickly that I thought oh, I've got to scale this back, and I went I went back to uh, I went I fell back to a. Um, or once weekly instead. Yeah, it, it's hard because also I, for me, I like to do a lot of research. So I like to listen to a lot of the episodes for people I'm going to have on and you know, do due diligence and give them the respect of them. You know, they've been nice enough to come onto your show. So I want to, I want to be able to ask them questions that, you know, uh, uh, you know, show that I've actually had an interest in what they've got to say and what they've done, the work they've created. So doing that and spending the time listening and you know maybe checking stuff out on their facebook and their instagram and and it takes time and to do that at yeah to do that and do two shows a week i, I couldn't do it yeah you know, I, I have trouble doing you know an interview show every second week yeah <laughs> so yeah so where can people find your show and get hold of you Okay, um, my guest list pod, uh, pretty much everywhere that you want to look. So Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, um, it's all at my guest list pod. I have a website, my, my guest list pod .com, where you can leave me a voicemail, you can support the show, you can check out all the shows that I've done, you can check out my guest profiles. Uh, what else is there? Uh, that's about uh, it, I think. That's yeah. You can pretty much find everything you need to at the the website, and everything else is on the on social media. Okay, I've got those down. Anyway, thank you for speaking with me today, Darren. This was great fun at last. Marv, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Uh, I really appreciate everything you do with uh, promoting. Uh, everyone's work. You're a man after my home, my own heart when it comes to that. And uh, you know, you're more prolific than I am, which I I really uh, uh, you know it's uh, inspiring as well. So uh, it makes me feel lazy when I I see you put out another episode, and it's like oh, I've got to get to it. So I, I really appreciate you uh, having me on, and uh, uh, hopefully um, people will uh, you know uh, understand that. Uh, your show is all about promoting other people's shows pretty much the same way mine is and that, uh, you know, it's very altruistic in terms of what you do. And uh, I, I enjoy listening to your shows and I you have some great guests and 
the rapport you have with those guests is uh, you know, very genuine and it shows that you, you're you invested in what they do. So um, you having me on as a guest is uh, it's very – I'm honoured. Thank you. I was honoured to be on yours because I, th- I feel the same way about yours because you have a – you have an interest in your guest as well, and that that shines through. And you know, it's it's great to listen to. You know, Thank that you interest much. that you've got in in podcast in their shows. That, you know, yeah. that sends the uh, mutual admiration society. Very <laughs> 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 uh, no, good. What I should do is do an entire season of just me talking to podcasters who, who do shows about podcasts. That's what I'll do next <laughs> season. I think. It could be an interesting I'll have, season. I'll have Marie on one week, and then I'll have Ariel on another week, and then I'll have um, – there's a few of them now. that There's a few started up recently. I can't remember what they're called now. Okay. Well, you've got the Pod Bible, haven't you, I think? I think they've got their own show now. I haven't seen that one, no. I think it's great the more of these sorts of shows that come out because all it does is creates, I think, more community between podcasters. Uh, which which is something that I, I've really come to enjoy about this area of, you know, this uh, platform of podcasting. Like we, we touched on it before, people are just really nice and supportive and the more shows that are trying to just promote other people's work, it just gets more work, the word out more often in more different places. So if you don't listen to my show, you'll listen to yours. If you don't listen to your show, you'll listen to one of the others. But, you know, it's just all about getting the word out there and, and, and growing the, the platform, which is great. But we're all different to each other. So in, in some ways, our personalities are different in, in, a, in yeah. a way. So that so if there's one show about podcasts that you, that you might not like, Try another one out. There's bound to be something. I've always said there's a show there for you if you go looking for it. There's a show that suits you as a person. Yeah, definitely. And and it's it's funny you say that because of being a hockey fan. I, I remember me thinking because I was listening to podcasts at the time. I wonder if there are any hockey podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I found out there were quite a few. <laughs> so um, yeah, and uh, I think that's. That's the thing. You know, we talked about niches before. If there's a niche, there's a podcast about it. So what watch this space for when I get the fly fishing people on. And I'm going to try for Mr. Portaloo, I think, at some point. Ah, oh, very good. <laughs> no worries. That's good. Yeah, you should listen to that episode from the uh from uh, Podcast Garage, actually. It's it's a really it's a fun episode because of obviously the the subject matter that he deals with but he was really smart with the way he structured his show and the way he does his show it was really informative and uh yeah it was it was a really good episode and yeah that's that's an interesting niche so (laughs) definitely going to check that out anyway you can find pods like us on instagram twitter and tiktok just look for pods like us and we are available at pods like us at gmail.com anyway thank you everyone for listening and hope you listen again to another episode of pods like us